Ah! Ah, wait, wait, hold on. Sorry, I am, uh, fiddling with something here. There we go. Uh, I lost track of time. I wanted to start early tonight, but here I am now. I was wondering why it was a little too loud. It's because I didn't have my monitor on. Uh, there we go. Hey, I am back for another night of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles, specifically Adventures. Uh, I am just going through a few things here. Going to do a sound check real quick. Okay, sounds good. I always do it because I'm paranoid and because no one's usually here in the first couple minutes to tell me if I sound like shit or not. And when people are here, they kind of don't tell me I sound like shit, so please do that if uh, you're here and you hear me not sounding good. <laughs> I appreciate it. Anyway. I've got a bunch of bots following me right now. Okay. Alright, we're good. So, last night... We started case three. Uh, Ryanosuke and Sasato arrived in London. They went to the chief of, uh, chief justice of London's office, uh, and we were essentially thrown into a trial as, as a part of a test, as part of Ryanosuke's test to see if he could stay in London as an attorney. And uh, we're essentially defending a leprechaun who may or may not have killed someone. Uh, he is a loan shark. Though he's also respected by the people of London. And, uh, currently we're investigating the possibility that the victim in this case may have fallen through the ceiling of the omnibus the character, the, the defendant was sitting in. And, uh, we're about to cross-examine the two other passengers on the top. Quite a wild ride. Oops. Second. Okay, sorry. Someone had just messaged me. So these two jokers right here, uh... They claim to have nothing to do with this, but I feel that that might not be the case. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> I have two bits of hydration with me tonight. A Arnold Palmer and a whole bottle of water, so I will not be, uh, I will not be hitting the, hitting the wall tonight. I'm also starting later than usual, so less time streaming, which sucks because I was hoping to hit 12 hours between the last three days just to make up for the fact that I won't be here tomorrow. But, uh, you know, I could just do a couple a little extra on Friday as well, and just kind of fill the gap that tomorrow's gonna leave. But yeah, I won't be here tomorrow. I'm gonna be doing, uh, auditions and, and such and recordings tomorrow night. Uh, and also chores. So it's, it works out for the best. And then Friday and Saturday I will be here. Anyway, refuting the accusation. You're the only two people up on that roof deck, dead or alive. I could swear to that. If anything had happened while we were sitting, don't you think one or the other of us would have noticed? In any case, neither of us know the first thing about the victim. We had no reason to kill the man. The skylight was shut the entire time, I tell you! We couldn't possibly have opened it! I lost that accent already. I, like, I can't... I lost the voice I was doing. It was like, yeah, well, that's right, it is! If you're so sure the victim fell through the skylight, where's your proof? He loses his temper very easily. Hmm. I must say that on listening to this testimony, it is somewhat hard to imagine. How either witness could have performed any malevolent act on this open roof deck, without the other noticing forthwith. That's right, you see? We're innocent, I tell you. Although logically, of course, the argument falls down to if the two of you were in collusion or in one another. What? Eh? Ooh, that, uh, that peaked. 
according to the investigations by Scotland Yard. The two witnesses share no common dealings. <laughs> well, I don't trust coppers any more than I trust the stinking rich. Something doesn't feel right here. The trial's going in our favor, really. So why do I feel so uneasy? Counsel the defense, over to you. Your cross-examination, please. Oh, yes, my lord. So at no time did the victim, Mr. Mason, climb up to join you on the roof deck? Absolutely not, Dickon! No question about it, he said. None at all. Oh, but yes, of course. I, I remember seeing them both. I saw the victim inside the enclosed cabin talking with this man here. Is this true, Mr. McGilded? Hear me, my lord, at the risk of repeating myself. I boarded the omnibus alone and nodded off inside almost immediately. That's an outright lie. Without doubt, you were engaged in. Let me stop you there, fella, and ask, do you have any evidence at all? At all? Ah. Uh. It's all about the evidence in the court these days, so it is. You do well to remember that. Ah, I saw you with my own eyes! This is going so well. wasn't the final run of the omnibus at ten at past ten o'clock in the evening. It would certainly have been quite dark. Perhaps too dark to see clearly? Is this some kind of a lock? Is this some kind of a joke, he said? Is that what this is? Or perhaps one of the other of you one or the other of you fell asleep briefly? Are you fair, Dinkum, sir? Are you serious, sir? That's what he said. It's impossible, I tell you. Give you the keys to the vault if you could fall asleep in that bitter cold. If you did manage it, your eyelids would freeze shut and you'd never open them again. That's extreme. It was extreme, I tell you, and we had to put it all up with this because man had locked the blah, 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 blah. and we had to put up with it because this man had locked the door. Any true gent would have unlocked it and let me in when I knocked. Uh, I'm, I'm dreadfully sorry about that, young fella. But you see, I was away with the fairies and I didn't hear you at all. It's a lie! I saw you through the glass! You were talking to someone! Now, now, it was a cold night, so it was. People do be seeing things that aren't real in the cold. It is hardly surprising. Yeah, I've just gone, I've gone 180 on his voice. So I can't hear myself that well. Testing. Okay, that works. Sorry about that. Saying things. Saying things. I believe we've reached an impasse here on this particular point. Uh, you. 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 I'll take it personally now, lad. If I'm a suspect in this case, then tis only fair that you and the other fiend are too. Open and free competition is what a capitalist society is all about. This isn't a competition I should like to be involved in, really. In any case, neither of us know the first thing about the victim. Wait, why am I reading that? I did that yesterday, too. Hold it! So, you had never met Mr. Thrice-Fired Mason before? Oh, love, no, not once, never! He'd never met the man before, he said. Never. And you, Mr. First, had no prior dealings with the victim either? 
That's right, sir. Hatters don't have much to do with brickmakers, to be perfectly honest, sir. No, I imagine not. You see, how many different ways can I put this? Neither of us, neither of us have the remotest no, connection no. to the... To the blah. Well, we know that's not true. You have a connection to, uh... To... To... to the Gilded over here. Excuse me! In Layton versus Ace Attorney, wasn't it just a moment when Phoenix would stop the, uh... the other witness? Just a moment. Mr. McGilded? Yes, Counsel, what can I be doing you for? Did the witness's last statement give you pause for thought somehow? And again, they did apostrophe yes. I'm pretty sure they did not do apostrophe... Maybe I'm thinking of Fuga. Maybe I was thinking of Fuga. I really want to get back to that game, too. Not the remotest connection. Is that right now? I wonder. What are you insinuating now? Oh, Mr. Fairplay, it has been too long, so it has. Eh. If I'm not very much mistaken, I believed his fast approach, and is it not? Your repayment date? I... I beg your pardon? <laughs> you borrowed 20 guineas from me, sir? At, at my most... at an unconscionable rate of interest. You tricked me! It's... it's extortion! Well now, is that a touch of begrudgery, is it? The sort of begrudgery that might motivate a fella to pass his crimes off on another? Ah! And young Mr. First. M me, sir? W what do you want with me, sir? You do be making hats for a living, do you not? That the top hat sliding about on your head? Is that one of your own creations, is it? Oh, well, um, I'm still just an apprentice, you understand? I'm learning to find the perfect fit for whatever fine gent walks through the door. <laughs> the perfect fit, is it? Well, it is a very... Distinctive design, so it is. Many customers like it, I tell you. They like a distinctive touch. Customers? Such as the nice fired Mason. Ah! There was a photographic print of the victim submitted as evidence for my lord. Hmm? Oh, ah. Uh, this, you mean? Yeah, there's one patchwork hat. I love it. I like that hat. The student general exudes style. I'm so sad he's dead. But like, like sad in the like, oh, I'll get over it way. Not sad in the, oh my god, Cosma's dead kind of way. I can't help thinking that the fellow's hat looks distinctly familiar, wouldn't you say? Um. Oh. That's, that's one of my hats. <laughs> I that it is. So it seemed the brickmaker was a customer of yours. The sort of customer I'd wager you could have had a wee quarrel with over the distinctiveness of the goods. Oh, no, sir. Absolutely not, sir. Well, there's really nothing more to add. It wouldn't be right to say that the two fellas here haven't the remotest connection to the victim, you see? I rest my case. You, you little weasel! Arrgh. He's better at this than I am. Gosh, Mr. McGilded has certainly been through his been thorough in his research, hasn't he? Please don't let me li don't let me little interruption. Hold up the proceedings. I knew that was gonna get me that achievement because I saw that before I quit uh, last night. Scarlet was shut the entire time. Okay, whoops. Accidentally hit that early, but whatever. I didn't mean to reread that line anyway. Are you quite certain about that? That the skylight was shut the entire time? I'm going to lose my block with you in a minute. He's going to lose his rag with you in a minute. That's what he said. Take a look for yourself. Go on. You see, it's shut fast now, just like it was on that night. I mean, you could have just shut it after he was dropped in there. So it is, of course. A fellow miss, uh, a fellow the size of Mr. Mason could likely break right through it, still and all. What? Just looking at the size of the ting, you understand? Now you hold on there a minute, sir. The size of the ting means nothing. Not on its own. Let's consider the bigger picture here, shall we? 
Let's stop biting our cane, shall we? Um, I, I was riding the army bus on another occasion when, um, well, I broke wind loudly. I, I shocked myself with it as it happens. Hey, yeah, farted. This is an unexpected confession, Mr. First. Oh, I, I just mean to say, well, the point is, I tried to open the skylight, see? But, just my luck, I couldn't make it budge. The stench was terrible. Everyone was looking daggers at me, sir. They went as red as a rogue, I did. Are you expecting me to sentence you? Oh, no, sir. The, the point is, the skylight can't be opened. I tried and tried when I was inside that cabin of shame. Excuse me! Excuse. Do you have something to say about that, Miss Lestrade? Miss Lestrade! It opens. Hmm? The skylight. That is what we were talking about, right? Now, how about now? All them skylights open, dead easy. More easily than you can load that weapon. That's a lie, I tell you. Otherwise, when I broke wind, I... I... You can't do it from the inside, you mug. Oh! Look. A few weeks ago, I was up on the roof deck of one of my old drags, and I had a great haul. I mean, I had purses coming out my ears. Mr. Lestrade, no, this is not the form to be eulogizing on the subject of your criminal activities. Well, anyway, I had a bit of a scare. When I lifted that last bloke's purse, he got wise to me. All four of them surrounded me, so I couldn't hop off the bus and leg it. So what I did was I used the skylight, opened the catch, and jumped right through. What? Yeah, the catch of them skylights is on the top side. That's why you can't open them from the cabin. The skylight opens from the roof deck? Elif? Climb up onto the roof of the omnibus at once and verify this witness's claims. What a shock. The latch was up there. Who would have thought it wouldn't open? On oh, my head. Wait, what? Oh, oh my hat! See? Order, order, order! So it appears that the street girl's statement is quite true. I don't believe it. The skylight opens, and from the roof deck, Mr. Naruhodo, this could be the clue we've been looking for. Well, counsel of the defense, please continue with our cross-examination. Yes, my lord. So, the skylight opens. Perhaps I should investigate for myself. Hold it! Hmm. Truth. It's right, I meant to hear it. We came in to see what we, say what we saw, I tell you. Not for this. But you call us both shicers. Shickers? Shicers? I don't know that word. Brand us as criminals. You call us liars, that's what he means, and accuse us of doing it. As it stands at the moment. There's no hard evidence that incriminates yourselves now, is there? I believe we're much in the same position as one another here. If I don't crack this case soon, he'll crack his teeth. Hmm. I wonder if these two men were really involved in some way. I couldn't say. I mean, I don't really know anything about them, do I? Although, by the same token, I don't really know anything about Mr. McGilded either. It's so hard to know what to believe here. I think we should try to remember that it's evidence alone that we can truly determine the outcome of a trial. Evidence. No one can argue against decisive evidence, including the members of the jury. So you're saying that what we need now is to find a conclusive piece of evidence. Yes, Mr. Naruhodo, precisely. This is 
Skylight was fastened shut before, but now the catch has been undone. We should be able to open it. You can certainly see inside the carriage through this opening, that's for sure. Yes, and there's a lamp in the enclosed cabin. So I'm sure the witnesses would have been able to see quite clearly. I already see what's wrong there. That's not good for us. That's not good for us, but look at that. I probably have to look at it from the inside, though. Yes, it does very wide, open very wide, doesn't it? Wide enough to kick someone like you do, certainly, Mr. Naruhodo. Why someone like me? Ah, wh what is it? Look, just here. Look at this. That's without question. It's blood. How would there be blood stain here? Surely, it can't be unrelated to the case, can it? There's a blood stain visible in the frame of the skylight when it's open. Nice. Just the hard evidence we need. On the night in question, the victim was fatally stabbed in the stomach. And immediately afterwards, the victim's body was pushed through the skylight into the cabin below. Those are the facts, and the irrefutable proof remains clearly visible in the omnibus that stands before us today in this very courtroom. What? That's... that's utter humbug! Ah! You can't possibly have any evidence! No, you can't. I, I mean, we didn't do it, I tell you. It's impossible. Irrefutable proof here in this courtroom. Counsel? My lord? I believe everyone would appreciate a little clarification here, hmm? Where exactly within the omnibus is the evidence to which you allude? You will point out what it is that proves the victim fell to the roof deck through the skylight. Got it! By Jupiter, is is that blood? Ah! This blood stain proves two things. Firstly, when the incident occurred, the skylight of the omnibus was open. What? And secondly, the victim was already bleeding when he fell through the opening. Oh my! And so it follows that Mr. McGilded, who was inside the enclosed cabin himself at the time, cannot possibly be guilty of this crime. No! Order! 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 Hold it! But, 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 but! But the blood could have been sprayed up there when the fellow was stabbed inside the cabin! It only found its way to that one particular spot on the skylight. Sure, and that would be very convenient. Ugh. And let's keep it in mind that the skylight catch can only be unfastened from the roof deck. I myself wouldn't have been able to open it now, would I? But, 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 but! There's no way to know for certain, is there? If the gent really fell to the skylight, I mean. Why don't you have a good look at the floor of the cabin between the first two seats, Mr. First? It is all too plain, if you see. There's the aftermath that shows the poor fella dropped from the fair height right there, so it is. What? No! But, but it can't be! It's... it's all... LIES! My fellow jury members! I think we can all agree that this clear proof is the defendant's as of the defendant's innocence, can't we? I believe we can, yes, sir. It's clear to me now where the filthy rubbish can be found in this courtroom. So, they thought they could pull the wool over my eyes, did they? I won't tolerate any of the guild's carriages being sullied with blood. I won't tolerate it! Oh, I always knew that nice gentleman who gave us that delightful park couldn't have done such a thing. On three, then. Everyone! One, two... Three! 
Objection! A chilling performance, Mr. McGilded. Oh, and what would you be referring to there now, Lord Van Zeeks? A blood stain on the frame of the suck eye light. Such evidence is null and void. What? Why? For one extremely simple reason. That smear of blood never existed. Objection! What are you talking about? It's there for all to see, and it's clearly blood. Objection! I personally attended Scotland Yard's investigation of the omnibus. The officers involved went over the carriage with a fine-toothed comb. So I could state with absolute surety. No such smear of blood existed in the carriage. At least, not until this trial began. But... Uh, are you suggesting, Lord Van Zeeks, that this stain of blood was... Fabricated, my lord? Yes. And while this court has been in session. What?! Yo, I, how come he could just say shit's, shit's fabricated and everyone believes him, but... You know, I go, I jump through hoops to prove my point, and people are like, eh, he's still lying. <laughs> what a palaver. I must say I didn't expect such crude reasoning from a prosecutor of your standing, Lord Van Zeeks. But I'm Magnus McGilded, a fellow known all over the capital for his fine contributions. Contributions? Contributions to public life. I don't take kindly to slander, and I'll fight and I'll fight it to the bitter end. What is wrong with me? Why do I keep doing that? Biddle end. Even if it's rolling off the tongue of the Reaper of the Belly. Mr. McGilded, I realize that this is your first appearance in court as the accused. However, I am well aware of your involvement behind the scenes of a great many affairs of dubious nature. You're very adept when it comes to avoid getting your hand avoiding getting your own hands dirty. And each time it happens that a case you're involved in is investigated, you adapt the facts. Adapt the facts? What does that even mean? When you wield a fortune the size of Mr. McGillard's, however ill-gotten it may be, nothing is impossible. Tampering with evidence, manipulating the scene of a crime, bribing witnesses... I toast your ability to concoct the most convenient of stories, sir. Tut tut, Lord Van Zeeks, this will not do, to be sure. Will it now, Council? Hmm? Oh, no. I think it's fair to say, this does all sound like a rather far-fetched excuse by a desperate man. The blood in the skylight didn't exist, you say? But if you will all cast your minds back, is it not true that the omnibus there has been in the courtroom the entire time? Could anyone possibly put a smear of blood in it without the word and without the world and his wife seeing? Isn't that right now, Council? It's true. The omnibuses have been in full view the entire time that court has been in session. My learned friend. Here's to hearing your opinion on this matter, in your own words. As you wish. Could someone have tampered with the omnibus during this trial? If you're asking me, I think. I mean, I don't want to say it's out. I want to say it's out of the question, but as a defense lawyer, it's my job to advocate for the defense as best as I can. But still, I feel as though there's something even more important at stake here. Yeah, the truth. There is no evidence to suggest the defendant did as my learned friend suggests. However, in terms of having the opportunity to carry out the alleged tampering, there is one possibility. Oh? Good gracious! Explain yourself, counsel. Yes, there is. It seems my Lord Nipponese friend has no intention of running from this deceit. Deceit? I'm sure everyone still remembers clearly the recess that we were forced to take. 
As a result of the smoke grenade fired by the witness currently on the stand, Miss Gina Lestrade. The courtroom was filled with smoke, and everyone was thrown into confusion. All of us were made to leave this chamber. In that brief interval, under the veil of smoke and in all the chaos, it could have been possible to steal inside this uh, the omnibus. with Ruin that delivery. Are you wise? What are you trying to pull, ye? You rotten feckless gouger! F feckless gouger? You're supposed to be defending me. Tis a wicked plot. Tis a plot to undermine me, so it is. Objection! Whatever you think this is, it changes nothing. The facts are the same. After this courtroom was evacuated earlier, as a result of the smoke grenade. A number of inconsistencies materialized in relation to the Omnibus. Inconsistencies such as... To start with, the storage compartment underneath the rear passenger seat. When the police investigated the Omnibus, this compartment was full of the driver's items. Secondly, we have the smear of blood on the edge of the skylight. As I have said, that was not present at the start of the trial this morning. Hmm. Unfortunately, Lord Von Zeeks, no one is able to corroborate your claims. That's true. When the Omnibus was first wheeled out, both the storage compartment and the skylight were shut. Accordingly, I'm afraid to say, we cannot establish with any certainty if this evidence is the result of tampering or not. Indeed, my lord, no doubt there was not a single person who saw fit to verify such things. What do you think? Sorry? About the Omnibus, is there anything else unusual about the Omnibus? Do I have an inkling? I don't know. Are we playing Splatoon? My lord. Yes, Council. There is one further inconsistency. A mark that surely could not have been present at the start of the trial. What? In the devil's name are you going to say now? If you dare to betray me, you little maggot, you'd better start watching your back! Objection. Silence, McGilded. The court awaits the defense's clarification. Arr. This trial keeps swinging one way and then the other. I have no idea what's the truth and what's deception. What am I supposed to believe here? I shall have to ask you to elaborate, Counsel. Where exactly is the alleged mark that you claim to appear at some point during the trial? Zeke's doesn't realize the blood is there. Got it. If we consider the victim fell through the skylight onto the floor of the cabin, you would certainly expect to find signs of blood where he landed. But as far as I recall, this blood stain on the cabin floor was not there when the omnibus was first brought into the courtroom. Good lord! So I do believe you're correct, Council. There's like a noise happening. I think it might be raining. Is it raining? It might be raining. 
No, mostly sunny. No, and never mind, it's raining. It was still showing when I was at my, uh, my girlfriend's place. Damn it, sour cream. He commented sus on, on my, on the part that I streamed on Monday. I just got the email saying he commented it. Fucking hell. Whatever. I wonder if he realizes that I'm streaming right now. Well said. Although, as an advocate, as advocate for the defense, one might say that was a very careless slip of the tongue. I believe that blood stain on the floor is a decisive piece of evidence. But if the question is whether that evidence is genuine, or whether it was unlawfully fabricated by someone, I feel compelled to admit that there's at least a possibility that the evidence is fake. is over. Mr. McGilded? I've done everything I possibly can to cooperate with the court, but it is all over now. But, but you're the defendant. It is over, I tell ye. Memory, recollection, what people think they saw. It is all in the nonsense. Facts are what counts, and the fact is that bloodstain is there. Now! Oh, uh, well, and over the course of this desperate trial, long and extremely drawn out as it has been, that good for nothing Reaper of the Barely has failed to present any decisive evidence at all. <laughs> I'm scandalized, so I am. I thought better of Lord Van Zeeks. Well, my lord. I must concur with the defendant. The uninformed recollections of an individual cannot stand as evidence. At this moment in time, the particular blood staining question is very much in existence. And in the absence of any credible method by which to prove its alleged previous non-existence... I could have swore it was there at the beginning of the trial. Wow, maybe I didn't look hard enough. I regret to say that it would be improper for this trial to continue. Your, your lordship can't be serious. Lord Van Zeeks, what is your position? The prosecution, my lord has no further witnesses or evidence to present. Very well. In that case, as I believe we have explored every possible avenue in this matter, I shall proceed to my adjudica adjudication. As a formality, I'm of course obliged to confirm with the defense first. What formality? As things stand at the moment, it would seem that Mr. McGilded will be found not guilty. Yes. Which would mean we've won. Is that really the right outcome here? Is it really all right for the trial to come to an end now with all these unexplained inconsistencies? Counsel for the defense, your closing statement, please. Yes, my lord. The defense believes... Oh, man. I... I th this, is, this is a hard one. I feel like this is going to have way more repercussion than the, uh, one from the, uh, from Justice For All. I am here in this courtroom today to advocate for the defense of my client, Mr. McGilded. Excuse me. However, at this moment in time, I cannot in all good conscience attest fully to the defendant's innocence. What are you saying, man? Without any question, there is no conclusive evidence to prove that the defendant is guilty. However, there is also no conclusive evidence to prove that he is innocent. Good... Good gracious me! Order? Order? This... This is unprecedented behavior, counsel. A defense lawyer calling the accused's innocence into question? Are you of sound mind? <laughs> oh, it was a grand decision to appoint you as my lawyer, so it was. A grand decision. What? I must say, I didn't expect quite such an exciting spectacle at the end there, but still. 
Here, have this for your troubles. Ah! Your job here is done, fella, and some fine work you've done, so you have. What do you mean? It's just as the right honorable gentleman so succinctly put it before. The trial can't go on anymore. And your closing statement there was, how did he put it now? Nothing more than a formality. <laughs> I really don't know what to make of all this. Was the evidence we've seen genuine, or was it fake? His lordship will be fuming. Any unsightly rubbish should be disposed of promptly, as I said. The stinking rich are always guilty of summing you. Mark my words! I feel terribly ashamed that I ever doubted that lovely man who gave us the lovely park. Now the proceedings have unfolded in this way. I am compelled to declare a premature end to this trial. Furthermore... The court must accept the defendant's plea. I take you kindly, my lord. I hereby glance the verdict of this court. Objection! But, but we still haven't determined if the blood scene in the omnibus is genuine or not. We don't know if these witnesses are telling the truth or a pack of lies. We have no idea about the truth. Lord Van Zeeks. My lord. The case made by the prosecution was flawed, plain and simple. If indeed the omnibus presented as evidence was tampered with, the prosecution is at fault for allowing such a disgraceful perversion of justice to take place. My sincerest apologies, my lord. Objection! But... Wait... When we were evacuated from the courtroom, Lord Van Zeeks ordered the evidence to be secured. I'm afraid the prosecutions cannot shun responsibility in this matter. That's so unfair. The culpability of the defendant has not at the present time been established by this court. Consequently, the jury will not be required to proffer judgment. What? Well, Lord Van Zeeks, it's been a pleasure, so it has. And as for you, my dear fella, I couldn't have asked for a better defense. Do you mean to tell me that this all's been a grand waste of time? It is the law of the land, my good man. If you'd like to pursue this matter further, you can always go ahead and try to change the law. Magnus McGilded. Good grief, you've got more to say to me, have ye? Just one thing, a warning. This is far from over. Well, something to be looking forward to then. <laughs> I hereby pronounce the defendant, Mr. Magnus McGilded. Very fanciful. Hard won victory. I can't believe it! This is an outrage! They should have examined the evidence more! What are you talking about? The man's been cleared! He's innocent! With the courtroom and pandemonium for the second time that day, the judge delivered his verdict. And my first ever trial in Great Britain came to an abrupt end with the defendant being found not guilty, ostensibly a victory for us. I mean, the Chief Justice had to know that something was, some bullshit was gonna happen. The Old Bailey Defendant's Antichamp. It certainly was a long trial. Ah, yes, it was. 
Your first ever trial on foreign soil, and your first victory! It was a wonderful performance. My heartfelt congratulations. And to you, Mrs. Sato. Thank you for your assistance. I... I suppose we should be happy. The trouble is, we're still completely in the dark about what actually happened. Well, we didn't have enough time. But isn't it wrong? I mean, who was actually responsible for Mr. Mason's death? We don't even know that! The sole aim of the defense is to obtain a verdict that exonerates the defendant. You carried out your duty to perfection. Aye, that you did! Mr. McGilded. Ah, and that girl's with him, too. Well, it seems that the stories are true. Oh, what stories? How about the six enormous fireworks they do be letting off when there's a verdict of not guilty? I'm sure yous must have seen them now. Spectacular, wouldn't you say? Yes, definitely. I heard it was a sight to behold, and to be sure it was. And I've you to tank, I suppose, for having an opportunity to see it. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. I'm not really sure I did anything. Hey, Sour Cream, I was just talking about you. I saw your comment on my video from this morning, like like five minutes ago, and I was just like, oh, look, Sour Cream wrote the, wrote the comment. Thought you aren't going to stream on Thursday. I'm not! It's... Uh, I Oh, you know what? I think she got confused. So here's the deal with how I stream. I stream... It, first off, where I live, I live on the east coast of the United States. It is currently 12.57 a.m., so I technically start my streams around midnight, and I say it's, like, the night before. So, like, if I start streaming at midnight on Tuesday, then I'm like, I stream Monday night. So I'm streaming tonight, but I'm not streaming tomorrow. So this time tomorrow, I won't be here. Yeah, sorry. I'm sorry about that. I know for you, it's, it's the middle of the day. But yeah, Friday for you. Saturday and Sunday, I'll be streaming. Though Sunday, it's gonna be, like, way early for you. Because Sunday, for Sunday, your time, I'm gonna be streaming, like... Afternoon, my time. Like, over 12 hours from now. Well, I don't know about that. I'm not really sure I did anything. What on earth are you saying, fella? How did I make it out of the free man, then? Uh, you missed absolute pandemonium. So, long story short, uh, a bunch of the evidence in the Omnibus was fabricated, supposedly. And because we cannot prove that it was fabricated... Technically, it's a mistrial, and uh, our defendant got off innocent, even though we don't fully believe that he's innocent. I don't think it was so much thanks to me as down to your... Uh, I don't think it was so much thanks to me as down to your planning. You're a straight-talking fella, aren't you? I must say, you had me astray in the head there once or twice. But you're young and headstrong. <laughs> ah, tis water under the bridge. Congratulations, Mr. McGilded, on having your name cleared. But nothing's resolved. There's only one thing that matters to me. Oh? Hi. They've all seen that I didn't do the odious and absolute deed. Tis grand, is it not? Well, it was the fault of the investigate. Yeah, pretty much. Exactly. It was the fault. Well, it was the fault of the, um. It was the fault of the prosecutor's office and the police. I suppose it is. And the fine fellas of Scotland Yard can take matters in hand and sort out any wee details. They'll see it for what it is. They'll get to the truth. I have absolute faith in them, so I have. After all, I do be providing a good number of their wages with all the taxes I pay. <laughs> it's not that funny. So then... As we agreed aforehand, 1,000 guineas for your troubles, fella. Oh, no, no, I couldn't possibly accept that much. Oh, I'll be wise. You are humble people, are ye, for you from the East? Well, if you insist. But have this, still and all. You deserve a reward. Mr. Magnus McGilded! Everything is ready, sir, if you'd like to follow me into the courtroom. Into the courtroom? What's this, officer? Tis sooner than I was led to believe. 
I hope it's not inconvenient, sir. There were some changes to the schedule. Well, I must be making tracks now. It is time for the inspection. Sorry, what inspection? They're going to examine the omnibus again, so I'm told. I asked if I could be present for it myself. They're going to examine it again? Now? Naturally, I'm under no obligation to take part in any more of this matter now. But as an upstanding member of the London Society, I do be doing my best to help what I can. It's a gentleman's duty, so it is. Why didn't I take the 1,000 guinea? So then, fare thee well. Twas an absolute pleasure meeting you. I hope you have a whale of a time studying here in Great Britain. And there he goes, a free man. Oh, I forgot she was here too. No, don't. You don't have to. Don't. You don't have to do. Come on. I, I could stop you at any time during this. Why don't I? Don't move. Whereas I want to say, get a move on. She really does take forever to load that thing. Miss Lestrade, would you mind putting that thing down? You're a grown up. Sorry? And I ate all grown ups. Ah, there you are. Uh, what? Oh. Naughty, naughty, running off like that. Is this some kind of picnic? Who's this little girl now? And taking that with you as well. I was looking forward to the trial run of my experimental smoke grenade launcher. Ha. Huh. Oh, do you want to play? You won't beat me. Oh, Jesus. Grr. Um, excuse me, but who are you? Oh, good day to ya. Um, well, the inventor, I suppose, of that machine. Why do everyone has gun- Well, she's an, in an inventor, apparently. The inventor? Well, normally smoke grenades are so dull, don't you agree? White, white, and more white. I have to be shrouded in smoke. It could be at least a pretty color, I thought to myself. Do we have to be shrouded in smoke, though? At all? I just took my eyes off of it for a moment while else I was changing into a different omnibus, and she pinched it. Luckily, I fitted it with a telegraphic beacon. A tele-what's-it-what? -what? I have no idea what this girl is talking about. Anyway, you're coming with me now. Back to my laboratory. What? What for? To apologize, of course, silly. To my technician. What? You mean... Say sorry? You must say sorry when you've done something wrong. Surely an adult has told you that before. An adult? <laughs> I don't listen to no adults. Come along then, follow me. Fine, have it your way. Oh good, you see, I knew you'd want to do the right thing in the end. Oops. I'm fairly sure that she not what she wants is to not get shot by that massive gun of yours. We'll be leaving now then. Bye bye. I'm so sorry for all the fuss. She was a lively one. Well, do you think perhaps we ought to be on our way now, too? Gina Lestrato, she's only 17. Young woman who witnessed the accident from her hiding place- incident from her hiding place in the omnibus on the night of the murder. She was discovered by the defendant. I mean, she's colluding with this, too, if the stuff was actually in the compartment that Van Zeeks mentioned. Why is she getting off without getting suspicion on her? Yes, you're right, but where to? Oh, we haven't had time to find a place to stay. Oh, we haven't had time to find a place to stay. Stay? Fuck. No sooner have we arrived in London than we had to rush here. All our traveling cases are still with the bailiff. Hmm. I was originally planning to spend today in search of lodgings. But this late hour in the day, I'm afraid we may be out of luck. Don't worry, though. I have a plan. If the worst comes to worst, I've heard of a lovely park where we could spend the night. Please tell me you're not thinking of the Gilded Park. I know it may be a little chilly at this time of year, but... Our youthfulness will see us through. I'm not so sure about that. I think a midwinter London might freeze a young person solid just as easily as an elderly one. You're simp for Gumshoe? Hey, Gumshoe's pretty attractive. He's a big bear of a man. Oh dear, that doesn't sound agreeable. Now I'm starting to regret turning Mr. McGill to down. 
1,000 guineas would have paid for a lovely warm room or mansion. And so, the trial to determine my worthiness for the study tour was over by the end of our first day in London. It's like a St. Bernard. However, as we were soon to learn, there were more trying times ahead. Just as the Reaper of the Bailey had warned, the case was far from over. What's going on? Get the fire brigade! Water! Bring water! Quick! What the? How did this happen? I don't know, sir. By the time I got here, it was already engulfed. No one was supposed to be allowed in here before we started investigating. <gasps> Oh. There's someone in there. Oh. Oh. This, this can't be. He's like fucking knew it. He's like, huh, I fucking told you, buddy. Should listen to me. End. The Realm of the Reaper. The Adventure of the Clouded Kokoro. Translator's note. Kokoro means heart. Uh, before I do that, let's do the next uh, escapade. Yeah, that was a case. Uh, interesting. Well, I guess everything else, yeah. These must take place after 4 and 5. I think the guards are danger the dangerously suspicious. Yeah, they are. This is complete takes place. It says, Ryanosuke and Sasato visit Lord Strongheart to report the outcome of Mr. Mr. Natsume's trial. Wait, Mr. Natsume? Oh, this is later. So, th so the I'm guessing it's like three after. Um... Hey, you know what? It's getting really hard to tell because like this is not the trial that we're supposed to be doing right now. All right, never mind. I think the, those episodes were all released after uh, the game. Well, I mean the game came out and then the episodes were released like one by one as DLC. So, I guess some of them take place at weird times. Eleven chapters. All right, here we go. From what we could gather on these uh, these titles here, this is gonna finally be the 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 an actual like trial trial. I begin to think, Wilson," said Sholmes, turning his head languidly in my direction, "that there is more to this case." than that which we have observed. Indeed, that there may be another part to this story that we are yet to discover. Hey, Destroyer fam, how you doing? His eyes wandered, following the steam rising from his cup of herbal tea. Herbal. Leading him to the distant memory of that snowy evening. To the young lady collapsed on the pavement along Briar Road, and to the knife in her back. Lit in the soft glow of gas lamps, a most extraordinary scene had been set. And under the cover of a light fog, the curtain had risen silently on the insoluble mystery of our invisible killer. So I guess this is a good time to say this. I I'm not going to stream uh, Resolve right after finishing Adventures, because this is very much taking a lot of my vocal energy. <laughs> Um, I'm probably gonna take a break and consider Resolve like a separate game to play later. Uh, I will try to do it before the end of the year. Uh, before, definitely before Somnium Files 2 comes out. You're okay, sore, but okay. Yeah, I, I feel that. I, I know that. 19th of February, 9.47am, British Supreme Court, Lord Chief Justice's office. Did you sleep last night, Mr. Naruhoto? 
No, not at all. It was, enor it was an enormous hotel, wasn't it? The rooms were so luxurious, it felt like staying in a palace. And with all the gas lights twinkling, it was brighter than day, even in the middle of the night. What about the enormous beds? After my time in the SS Burya, I wasn't going to waste a single inch of that space. I spent the entire night rolling from one side of the mattress to the other. Oh yes, it really was the sort of night you can only dream of normally. Except, when I learned that we owed three pounds for the rooms, that dream quickly turned into a nightmare. Oops, sorry about that. The building was so impressive and the entrance was so inviting, I just wandered in without thinking. In a lodging house in Japan, that sum of money would put a roof over your head for a whole year. I did try, but I'm afraid I couldn't help my tears when we were presented with the bill. Ugh, I really am sorry. Well, never mind. We must find some more affordable lodging straight away, though. If we're not careful, our entire stipend will be used up in ten days or less. Who was in the carriage? Uh, I can take a couple guesses. Does he say anything different? Nope, okay. They say, uh... They say the same shit. Nice. Ugh, London is a scary place. Ah, oh, good morning to you at this early hour. Oh, yes, um, we are, well... Good morning to you, Lord Chief Justice. We have come to report on the outcome of the trial at the Old Bailey yesterday. Sasato-san is amazing, she doesn't even bat an eye in the presence of the imposing Lord Strong Fart. That one was on purpose. Yes, I believe you had a very comprehensive initiation into British courtroom practices. Oh, yes, it was very eye-opening. Thank you. And in accordance with your instructions, Lord Strongheart, Mr. Norihoto performed his duty to the end. Yes, I have already been apprised of the events. You conducted a remarkable defense. You may consider the test passed. Oh! No longer are you a student from the Empire of Japan. You may henceforth claim to be a fully-fledged lawyer. My country is delighted to welcome young talent from such a remote eastern land. Um, thank you very much. So, I'm a lawyer now. Oh well. Now, in view of your new appointment, I have a fresh case in mind for you. I'd like you to take it on at once. I trust that won't be a problem. Another case already? Nothing trades a lawyer better than a practical experience. I'm sure... I don't sense dissatisfaction, do I? It's just that yesterday's trial ended unusually. I haven't quite come to terms with it. What's to come to terms with? The man was cleared. He looks kind of like Von Karma, yeah. What more were you hoping for? How's my day been? Uh, another... It's another, like, not terrible day of work, but I'm just like, I'm tired. I'm tired of working. It gets overwhelming very easily, and I don't like dealing with it anymore. Culp oh, good. If they're just reading, I'm just gonna drink. <laughs> my day gets good, my day's over. It's one in the morning. This is how I end my day, streaming. Nutsack. I just can't help wondering. Oops. If Mr. McGilded really was innocent. Oh, well, don't worry about that. Yeah, if you're working five times a week on top of working 
working out five times a week on top of work, and we gotta push through in the end. Yeah, tomorrow I'm not gonna be streaming. I'm gonna be doing voice acting auditions tomorrow. And recording for a project I'm already cast in. Excuse me. Mr. Naruhodo. It's just that I never managed to ascertain the truth. And then the trial ended. Well, you needn't let it trouble you for a second longer. Sorry? What do you mean, Lord Strongheart? Magnus McGilded passed away, immediately following the trial. I knew it! No. What? That was a weird read. M Mr. McGilded is... Dead? I have 19 minutes and 41 seconds until my next engagement. Lord Pop-Tart. Time enough to talk. Anything different if I examine this? Nope, it's all the same. It's all the exact same text. So I've noticed that this room has very, very light movement. Like you're allowed to scooch over to the edges just a tad. But there's nothing new examinable here. Everything, everything over here is the same as in the middle. So I'm led to believe that at some point we're going to be investigating something in here. And Herlock's going to be like hanging off one of the bookcases in the corner. Chief of Justice, Lord Chief Justice, who wields absolute authority in judicial matters, including the appointment of lawyers. He's a thoroughly intimidating man. Whoa, come on. Phoenix's Japanese name and his are the same. Yeah. It's it's very Nar Naruhoda Ryu Ri Nosuke is, is uh, Phoenix's uh, ancestor. They're very clear about that in, in all the trailers that he is di directly his ancestor. I don't understand. What happened? How could he be dead? After the trial concluded yesterday, there was a great commotion in the Old Bailey. As you'll presumably recall, an omnibus has been wheeled into the courtroom. Yes, of course, that was the scene of the crime which Mr. McGilded had been accused of. Precisely. Well, while the bailiff's attention was diverted by some other matter, the omnibus went up in flames. No. Could such a thing have happened? That is being investigated as we speak, but already. The police have identified a corpse found inside the charred shell of the carriage as that of Mr. McGilded. That's awful! By the way, sorry for leaving randomly, so I got a call from the old security job again that really need. Eh, no problem, man. Whatever you need to do. I also don't expect anyone to stick around here, honestly. I'm not that interesting. That man, that man must have slipped inside while the bill's uh, well, uh, That man must have slipped inside whilst the bailiff's attention was elsewhere. That bailiff really needed to pay more attention. No, that's wrong. And how could that have happened? That is also being investigated as we speak. Thinking back now, immediately after the trial, Mr. McGilda did mention going back into the courtroom to look at the omnibus. I'm not that interesting. I don't- I mean, I'm- look, I'm not- I'm not saying I'm boring. I'm just saying that, um, you know, I'm not- 
not a lot of people are gonna sit here and watch me stream this for four hours. <laughs> which I don't even think I'm gonna hit tonight because I started late, which sucks because I wanted to hit uh, 12 hours of streaming between Monday and now. An inspection of the Omnibus. Not to my knowledge, I don't believe Scotland Yard had any intention of re-examining the carriage. But then who was Mr. McGill talking about it? Ta blah, blah, blah. And who was Mr. McGill talking about? It's not that I'm uninteresting, I just don't think I have enough interest <laughs> at times. Both on my end and the other end. That said, I did do something cool. Check this out. All oh, right, it shuts off. I hate how the sound on the switch shuts off when I do that. Uh, I set up my uh, I set up my new Tyco controller with a uh, with a neat slip cover and this awesome shirt. I don't think I mentioned that I have this. I've been I've been I, I was really enjoying uh, Tyco no Tatsujin on the switch and I was like I want the drum controller for it, so I went ahead and I uh, procured it along with some other good stuff. And uh, you may be seeing that drum make an appearance at some point. If not in the near future, then in the slightly distant future. <coughs> Never mind that now. The Yard is making a thorough investigation. This matter is no longer of any concern of yours. Leave it to the police. Poor Mr. McGilded. Why didn't we take the 1,000 guinea from him? Damn it. British court. So, how did you find your first taste of our country's supreme court? Oh, well, um, I don't know. I mean, it was... Wow. Oh boy, you know? It was Cordy, all right. Mr. Naruhodo means the whole experience was slept... Sleeped in... Excuse me. Mr. Naruhodo means the whole experience was steeped in the solemnity of Great Britain's long history. It's really a world apart from our own judicial system in Japan, which is only a few short decades old. Wow, Sasato-san is such a way with words. And you seem to have a way of failing to find the right ones. The judicial system here is the most advanced in the world. Learn all you can. The most advanced in the world, is it? It was fortunate that your very first trial was a simple affair. Simple? That was it. That was simple. As I believe I mentioned yesterday morning, uh, it was a trial you couldn't lose. I don't mean to be contrary, Lord Strongheart, but that case was anything but simple. The circumstances of the case were so incriminating. I was stunned when I first heard them. In fact, I'm still finding it hard to believe that we managed to get a favorable verdict. <laughs> is, is something funny? No, no, my apologies. However, the fact is that you did receive the not guilty verdict you set out to achieve. And that can only be attributed to exceptional talent. Wouldn't you agree? Well, I, I don't know about that. Well, never mind. You exceeded my expectations, I freely admit. That much is at least an undeniable truth. Ah, thank you for subscribing. I know sour, I'm a cool and cute burb. Stop making me say that. Thank you for the sub ham, I appreciate it. Sub ham, like rum ham. Also, I'm sorry that that alert is so loud. Uh, it has to do with how my, um, my uh, capture card is set up. I used to have it set up a different way that gelled way better with my sound settings, uh, but for some reason it would get out of sync. Like I would go to the menu, hit left and right, and the sound would play like a second after the square moved. And then uh, sometimes, sometimes uh, it would echo if it got too loud and it was just unbearable. Like I couldn't deal with it. Sometimes it would just be way too low. So I changed how it works and now, um, it has to be really loud for it to work, like... This is how low I have my have my volume when I stream from anything other than the capture card. That is way too low. I have to crank my volume up to like 90. 
out of a hundred to get this to sound good. So as a result, all alerts, all Twitch alerts that I get when I'm streaming from the Switch are fuck, fuck loud. Your card in front of what's on Twitch. it's no problem. I can't believe you subscribed to Tier 2, thank you. That means a lot to me. You're the only person who has access to that emote, by the way, so enjoy it. You exceeded my expect- oh, you can't. But yeah, uh, I, I, I don't know if I could do sound rebalancing for the alerts. I might try to fiddle with the Switch a bit more, or this, the Elgato a bit more to make the sound come in better, but it's like... There is there's not a lot I can do to make it decent while not also like a pain in the ass to use. Also, I have a Wii HDMI to Wii converter now, and that straight up doesn't work half the time. So I imagine that changing my Swiss... Ugh. I imagine that changing my settings are gonna fuck it really hard. I'm aware. I'm hydrating, don't worry. I was working on the, uh, the Arnold Palmer, but I need, uh, I need some actual drink. The Arnold Palmer's probably not the best thing for hydration, because there is a lot of sugar in it. Also, I've been doing this for three days, so... I'm a little tired, but I also want to get through adventures here, like, by next week, so I can move on to Fuga. And then, probably at World Ends With You, but I've also got like two other games happening then. Which is precisely why I prepared the new case for you that I mentioned before. What's going on? What was he going to say before? There's a fly on my screen right above Sasato's forehead. I was like, what the hell is that? I'm like, oh wait, that's my screen. It's like a little tiny fly crawling on her forehead. So you don't want to stream for your graphics card, but obviously you're playing on Switch, so you can't. Well, I mean, streaming from the computer is not a problem. The problem is that the Elgato just doesn't... It's not the best capture card out there, especially the model I have. So some of the sound settings just don't work properly. And uh, it's unfortunate. Because I fiddled with it a lot, and I had stuff that did work for a while, and then it just, like, the second the, the card gets reset, which happens a lot, if I bump it, it gets reset, then it gets fucked up and it doesn't work anymore. So this is the only setup that actually works, it just requires me to increase my computer's volume, and as a result, uh, any alerts blow out my ears. This guy is definitely su more than Sasato. God damn! Could you perhaps give us some more details about the new case you mentioned? Don't tell me. It's a murder, and the trial starts in 10 minutes. Don't worry, it's nothing so alarming or quite so urgent as your last assignment. In fact, this case is completely different. Oh, I see. D did he just read my mind? That is to say, no one has died, as yet. And the trial will not be today. There is plenty of time to research the case thoroughly. 23 hours, 43 minutes, and 19 seconds to be precise. Yeah, I know, tech problems, that's just streaming in general. Stream tech problems the uh, is 80% is of the stream, and streaming is 20%. Uh, so the trial's tomorrow, then. Is everything alright? Oh, yes, I'm just a little confused, that's all. Yesterday's trial was... Well, it's left me wondering if I'm really cut out for being a lawyer. Oh, Mr. Norohoto. I don't know if I could face standing in that courtroom again after Mr. McGilded's trial. Might buy a stream deck? I've heard a lot of good things about stream decks. Um, I, I'm considering getting one, but the thing is, the stream deck doesn't replace the capture card. Does it? It. I also have no room for a stream deck. It's unfortunate. Like, I have no room on my... On my desk to keep it while I'm streaming. In fact, if you are admitted into the hospital, you wouldn't be classified you won't be classified as dead. So the doctor's like, the wound doesn't say you are dead I do. <laughs> I mean yeah, you technically have to be pronounced dead for it to be legal, but I mean someone can be dead. Let's be honest. Oh uh, yes, I nearly forgot. There is one similarity with yesterday's case. Once again, there is currently no one to advocate for the defense. No, so the stream is like one giant shortcut. Oh, yeah. The class does not dismiss you, I do. 
Oh, if the situation remains unchanged, the trial will start tomorrow with the defendant unrepresented. If that happens, I need not remind you of the inevitable outcome. The most terrible end awaits the defendant. I mean, let's be honest, we got the defendant off yesterday and he still got a terrible outcome in the end. He burned to death. Yes, that's right. Uh, here we go again. Your time is up. You will have to excuse me. I would advise you to begin making preparations for tomorrow's trial. After all, the clock is ever ticking. There is now but 23 hours, 26 minutes, and 39 seconds until the court sits. Last time he mentioned the 23 hours, he said there was plenty of time. And one more thing, Mr. Naruhodo. There is something I should like to ask you. Oh, um, what's that? Yesterday, you remarked upon something... ...that you intend to see through the will of your late compatriot, Mr. Asogi. People like that mostly have chronophobia, yeah. Uh. I would be interested to hear what exactly you mean by that. Inside 34 seconds. Oh, well, um, Cosmo always used to say, you see, that he wanted to learn how the greatest justice system in the world works so he could change ours in Japan. Now that he's gone, I'd like to work towards that myself. And there's another thing. Oh! Another thing? Continue. On the way here on the steamship, he said something to me. There's something very important that I have to do. Something very important. And what exactly would that be? He... he never had a chance to tell me. I suppose he would have done... If he'd ever made it to great... You're out of time. Well, thank you for an enlightening discussion. Mr. Naruhodo, what's all this about? Mr. Asogi never once mentioned any of the sort to me. I urge you both to focus your attentions on the matter at hand. I've taken liberty of summoning the police inspector in charge of the case. He'll be too, he'll be able to apprise you of the details. How long has he been there? So I wish you the best of luck and bid you farewell. This system is anything but just. It could be just if it was worked on a little better. There's something very important that I have to do, Kazuma-sama. What did you mean? I wish I knew, but honestly, he never told me. Anyway, we had better talk to the detective, don't you think? Yes, you're right. No, you're wrong. I hope I'm just imagining it, but I wouldn't say he looks pleased to see us at all. <laughs> hey, you, you're finally awake. You were trying to cross the border, right? Walked right into that Imperial ambush. It could be people just you have a brain cell and are competent. Yeah. yeah it looks good. What are you eating? Why is it wrapped in a newspaper? Um, could we trouble you? Oh, how you love Skyrim. What do you think? Ah! Um, uh, lovely weather, isn't it? What's the weather got to do with anything? Ah. Listen to me, you young Japanese upstart. Some frippery about the weather doesn't get every English gent eaten out of your hand, you know? Ah, but Sasato-san told me it was foolproof. I'm a busy man. A very busy man. There's a crime scene to investigate, but I'm here having the likes of you to talk to. Aggressive much? Yeah. Oh, I'm ever so sorry. Funny, I think Ham said the same thing yesterday. They mentioned aggressive much regarding a character. Or maybe that was you saying that as well. You both have very similar colored names in my chat. Ugh. Can you imagine what other officers that will be saying? Hmm? Haven't seen Gregson anywhere, have you? No, he's too busy with the bigwigs these days. And all because of some bumpkin who's here on a jaunt from a country I've never even heard of. Hear that ripping sound? That's my reputation at the yard going to tatters. There's no need to rip us apart as well. I don't believe we've been introduced. This is Mr. Ryonosuke Naruhodo, a defense lawyer. 
Eh? It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I'm Mr. Naruhoto's judicial assistant. So, Eh? It's lovely weather we're having today. Oh, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for subbing sour cream to me, Ham. That's great. That could be a stream gimmick. Just me freaking out every time I get a, uh... Every time I get a, a sub because the volume's too loud. It's alright. I appreciate it. Thank you. Subbing is never necessary, but always appreciated. Ready to quit your job? Here are the first 17 questions to answer. Ask yourself. Ooh, I'm, I'm opening that for later. You gifted a sub to rip my ears. Thank you for subbing, Sour Cream. Yes, thank you, Sour Cream, for accepting Ham's gift sub and subbing to me. You now have access to the bird uh, permanently for until it runs out. So... Ah, uh, no. no. Why won't this go away? How do I make it go away? There we go. It is appreciated. Like, it's it's absolutely not. That third spot place spot was looking juicy. <laughs> yeah, now I finally have someone in, a, in every one of the spots as well as the, uh, as well as the bit spots. Yeah, I don't get it. What, what don't I get? I'm confused. Just for the record, I, ha I have a full-time... As I said, I have a full-time job, so I am good on money. Any payouts I get from Twitch right now go to charity. If, by some crazy-ass miracle, I somehow start pulling in 70 people per stream and get partner, that's still not enough for me to quit my job, but uh, if I ever made a living off Twitch and voice acting, I'd probably uh, change how that works. But again, it also depends on how the payouts work. Because, I mean, my friend is a professional voice actor, and he's also a Twitch partner, and he just pays his mods. He does not uh, use his money on himself. Oh. Oh, I get what you mean, sour cream. <sighs> Here's the question, though. Are you... No, you know what? I'm not going to ask. I'm not going to say the rest of that sentence. Loaded pays me in Lunchables. It's lovely weather we're having today, isn't it? It's unseasonably fine, I grant you. London winters don't see a lot of sunshine. Unbelievable. How did she pull that off? So, ahem, <laughs> Long Strongheart has asked me to fill you in on the case. The name's Tobias Gregson. Inspector Gregson, to you. I'm from Scotland Yard. Gregson? Um, Inspector Gregson? What's the matter with Sasado-san? Does the detective's name mean something to her? Oops. Sim. Detective Inspector at, in charge of Scotland Yard's investigation of this case. He started in single mind in his approach and a great lover of fish and chips. 44. He's 10 years older than me. I like pointing that out. That wasn't what I was going to say, Sour Cream, but yeah, your mind's in the right place right now. <laughs> oh, the other word. The word. I've said it before. I was playing Persona 5 Strikers, and that word is in the game, and I didn't get banned for saying it out loud. Do I have that screenshot saved? Hold on. I played Famicom Detective Club, and I love this old man. He's very cute. Um, there, shut the fuck up, idiot. That was way back here. No, there it is. Yeah, beg me not to slap you in this face for being such a goddamn simp. Inspector, are you perhaps the Inspector Gregson? That's a, 
that's a fish he's eating. You saying it's hard to trace, but typing it will make them delete you. Ugh. You're acting like you know this man, Mrs. Sato, but he's a London detective. Oh, I do know him very well, in fact. Very well? Yes, he features prominently in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes. Oh, and that publication... What's it called? Ranched Magazine? Ranch Magazine? That's right, Inspector Gregson and Mr. Sholmes enjoy a wonderful, friendly rivalry. Really? You rival the great Mr. Sholmes? It's incredible. Oh, um, well, I don't know about that. Mr. Sholmes isn't a professional like myself, of course, but he does come up with these goods from time to time. Also, it would be funny if the Great Ace Eternally played Rickroll. Why? I guess. Maybe? If you want a game that legitimately Rickrolls you, uh, play Chrono Trigger. This theme sounds like Rickroll? No, I don't hear it. I guess that kind of... No. Mr. Sholmes is equally complimentary about you, Inspector, isn't he? You've earned his highest praise. They couldn't even attempt to get the rights to say Sherlock Holmes. Which is funny, because there's a Phoenix Wright game where Phoenix Wright says, Oh yeah, Sherlock Holmes too, baby. And people screen cap that now, going, who the fuck is Sherlock Holmes? There's a lot of weird, um, a lot of weird copyright stuff, but essentially Herlock Sholmes is the closest they could get. Who is also a copyrighted character. Herlock Sholmes is from, uh, the Arsene Lupin's, um, books. Or books about Arsene Lupin, sorry. Maurice Leblanc. Mr. Sholmes is- okay, yeah. Sure, Holmes lock. <laughs> Gregson is the pick of the bad lot of all the Scotland Yarders. Those were his own words. That's his highest praise? Lock, Holmes, sure. Share. Well, Mr. Sholmes isn't particularly known for giving compliments, you see. That he is not, and thanks to that magazine, my name's known all over London town now. That's great, isn't it? <sighs> To admit that to start with, I was a little, well, flattered by all the attention. Everyone wanted to shake my hand, and my reputation at the yard went through the roof. Well, that's wonderful. No, it is not! There's nothing more sinister than the man on the street. People are always having a look at me now. They're whispering rumors about me under their breath, I'm sure. Also, who doesn't know about Sherlock Holmes? No, the joke is that... The joke is that in one of the earlier games in the Ace Attorney series... There's a line where Phoenix Wright to himself says, Oh yeah, Sherlock Holmes too, baby. And when this game came out and the name was changed to Sherlock Sholmes, everyone quote tweeted that, that picture and was like, Who the fuck is, Her is Sherlock Holmes? Because he does not exist in this world. Rumors? Are, are you quite sure? He's changed since he started appearing in those stories. The fame's gone to his head. Stuff like that. Excuse me. Gosh, do you really think people are saying such mean-spirited things about you? Squeezes french fries aggressively. They're chips, not french fries. And that big stick is a fish. Oh, man, now I can go for fish and chips. Second fate worse than death is being possible. <laughs> is being popular. Um, <clears throat> I'm joking, though. French fries and chips are the same thing. I guess chips are technically bigger. Second Fate Worse Than Death is being popular. Uh, in a way, yeah. In some ways, no. I know a lot of popular people. Like I said, I know professionals in the fields that I'm interested in, so... Being popular isn't the worst, but it's also not great. It has its own set of challenges. Personally, I think it's worth it, but I know a lot of people probably don't. Like I said, they whisper, so I can't catch exactly what they're saying, but I know what folk are like. I'm sure that's what they're saying. As sure as eggs is eggs. I can go for eggs now, too. I get the feeling this detective could be very hard work. Oh, dear. Perhaps a sudden rise to fame does change people. Can't get stuff privately? I guess. I mean, it depends. Again, it's... It's more that people are just... It's, we're in an age of weird... We're, 
The internet has entered a weird age of privacy. The most fate worse than death is immortality. I do agree that that is a curse. I'm also terrified of death, so I don't want to think about not existing right now. So, um, about the case that the Lord Ju Chief Justice mentioned before. Nothing to tell, really. <clears throat> as far as we're concerned at the Yard, it couldn't be simpler. They don't have PB and J in Britain. They haven't lived. Maybe they do. I don't know. No, peanut butter was invented when? That was invented in, in the... When did he do it? It was invented in 1916, so it wouldn't have been invented at this point. This, uh, this game takes place in the 1890s, so they're about 20 years too early. It's not a thing they eat over there, really. Well, it is, it is an American invention, apparently, so there you go. French fries and French toast aren't named, made or named from French, but a guy with the, the name French in his name. Yeah. French, and that guy was French Stewart, who went on to be portrayed by Jimmy Fallon on Saturday Night Live in a, in a Jeopardy sketch. Oh dear, that probably means that as far as we're concerned as lawyers, it couldn't be more complicated. I wish you were wrong about that, but I have a nasty feeling you're right. A young woman was walking along the pavement on Briar Road when she was stabbed from behind. Fortunately, it wasn't fatal, but she's still laid up in the hospital, unconscious. That's despicable. What sort of coward would attack the poor woman from behind? I suppose you would have finished whoever it was off with a Sasato takedown, would you? That's neither here nor there, Mr. Naruhodo. Brace yourself, Ryanosuke. You've angered her. Anyway, after something of a whirlwind investigation, the criminal was arrested. He barely had time for a cup of tea after the incident took place, to be honest. So there must have been something left at the scene that led you directly to the culprit? That was a joke. French Stewart did not invent French did not invent French toast and French fries. I don't even really know what French Stewart has done. I don't know if I've seen anything he's in. He's an actor, right? Also, it's it's spelled Stew S T E W. He's an actor and dancer. He's on th he was on Third Rock uh, from the Sun. And he was in the Inspector Gadget sequel. Oh, man. That's, that's a bullet point on his career? Oof. He gets to play the sequel to, to Matthew Broderick. He didn't, but he did name them. No, he didn't. He didn't name them. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was making a joke. Don't worry. So there must have been something left of the scene that led you directly to the culprit. Or perhaps a reliable witness who recognized the person in question? Let me stop you right there. You're wasting your time on this one. Sorry? There's nothing you could do. There's no way to help the bloke now. Why ever not? Simple. The prosecutor that's been assigned to the trial tomorrow is Lord Barrack Von Zeeks. No! Sounds like you've heard of him, then. Uh, we fought him, and we won. Oh, yes, we were very familiar with Lord Van Zeeks. Believed to be the harbinger of death itself. The Reaper of the Bailey. Lord Barrack Van Zeeks, who we faced in court only yesterday. Mr. McGilda told us about him before the trial, didn't he? But -da 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 -da. When Van Zeeks stands for the prosecution, they call the accused his sacrificial lambs. And in every single trial in which he's been the prosecutor, the accused has been damned. I mean... I guess that's true. Technically, Mr. McGilded is, has been burnt to death. The Reaper of the Bailey nickname. This Reaper of the Bailey nickname, I suppose he's earned it because every defendant he advocates against is found guilty. Is that it? Well, if that's the case, we should inform you, Inspector, that in yesterday's trial against Lord Von Zeeks, Mr. Naruhodo secured a verdict of not guilty. 
Uh, and what of it? Oh, well, um, I think... That means even against the Reaper of the Bailey, it's not impossible to save the Defendant. French fries were made all the way in Belgium. Yep. No, you really don't have a clue, do you? What do you mean? What happened to that bloke in the end, eh? He's dead. Ah. Magnus McGilded came to a cropper in that omnibus when it went up in flames. So you can't rightfully say you saved the defendant, can you? Also, being named the Harbinger of Death is not a great thing. Everyone will be scared of you and will think that's your entire character. Yeah, exactly. What What are you saying? Look, if Von Zeeks could get the dirt to stick on everyone, he'd be a miracle worker. But that's not how it goes. He doesn't work miracles. He works magic. Black magic. I'd have a good long think about that if I were you. Are we really supposed to believe that? Alright, well, I filled you in as requested, and I'm very nearly out of chips. So I'll be heading back to the crime scene now. We're still carrying out a few investigations there. It was Briar Road, you said, didn't you, where the incident took place? That's correct, ma'am. And if you head over there to the holding cells, you can meet the, the criminal himself. You branded him a criminal already? He's as good as... Shaking life. Ooh, hey, Sky Jaybird, thank you for raiding. Get so many people in middle school scared of you. Uh, I would assume Destroyer of Ham would be a very intimidating name. How you doing? Hold on. I, I, I can't get back to the tab. There we go. He's as good as it. He's as good as shaking like a leaf in a cell. He is. It'll give you a good chuckle if nothing else. He's inmate fifty-three. Speak to the jailer, and he'll show you the way. Inmate fifty-three. Thank you. So there's no helping anyone against the Reaper of Bailey, of the Bailey. They say. Is something troubling you, Mister Narhodo? Welcome, Raiders. Wasn't that you knocked out the school bully in two shots? Guess no one knew you boxed. Wow. Everyone thinking everyone's black. Everything is black magic. This isn't medieval. Medieval we way farther in the past. This is Victorian era England. To tell the truth, when I recall the trial yesterday, I can't stop myself from shaking. The idea of facing the Reaper in court again is... Well, if you think it's too much for you, there's no shame in turning the case down. That takes courage, too. But if the man they've arrested is innocent, you could well imagine he would be shaking like a leaf in his cell. And I, for one, wouldn't find the sight of that funny. So, if I'm honest, I'm still reeling from the shock of yesterday's events myself. And I'm really not sure if I'll be able to help this man, whoever he is. But I'd like to try, so I think I'm going to make some inquiries. Will you help? Did you really think you had to ask? After all, I am your judicial assistant. Thank you. So then, shall we? Yes. Let's go. Oh my god, water is so much better. We haven't been here yet. Wonder what awaits. The scene of the crime, prison cells are what the suspects are held in whilst they await trial. Visiting is permitted at certain times. Oh, there's no detention center here. It's just the prison. That's my headphone. It's my left headphone. So these are the British prison cells. Oh, they're ghastly. It feels just like a dungeon. Yes, and having experienced it in Japan myself, I can assure you that our wooden cells feel a lot cozier than these cold stone ones. Oh, don't, Mr. Naruhodo. You're making it seem worse. Apparently our client is in this cell here. 
Where's the chamber pot? But it's so dark back there, I can't make him out. I wonder what he's like. Inmate 53, your legal representative is here to see ya. Stop hiding in the back of the cell and show your face at once. Am I... Am I a cat, as yet with no name? Call me by my number. It's utterly unbelievable, unjustly unreasonable. I refuse to answer. I feel like buying Astros was a big mistake. There's no emotes in the emote showcase. I only have two. I have the bird and Fawful. I figured no one would ever sub anything above tier one, so why even bother? Mr. Naruhodo, what? What do you think is going on here? I have no idea, but I wasn't just hearing things, was I? The tirade of complaints was in Japanese. Um, excuse me, but who? Shh, quiet. They're all around, hiding. I know they are. They're watching, listening, even now. I can sense it. Um, right. So, could I ask you who exactly- There you are! You've got to curse me, haven't you? Don't try to hide it, you're a ghost! Squawk the prisoner's next line. Ah, oh, God, no. A ghost? Can, can that count? No. You mean you no harm, prisoner san. Are you? Japanese, by any chance? This is. This is... BEYOND MY WILDEST DREAMS! Sorry, I couldn't do it then. I, I will do it. Here we go. FORGIVE ME FOR THAT OUTBURST BEFORE! I'M SO SORRY! That just sounded like... Overly excited Toad. Quick question, what graphics card are you using? Uh... uh, 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 uh I don't remember. Let me take a look. I know what my GPU is, because everyone cares about that these days. I don't know what my graphics card is. I think it's the NVIDIA something or other. Who gives a shit? Um, processor is an AMD Ryzen 7. Uh, oh, re I never named this PC. I need to do that. Device specifications. How do I see that? Are you just searching in the cells and then you found- you're just searching in the cells and you find Sherlock Holmes or Herlock Holmes? Yeah, I wouldn't doubt that'd be the case here. Uh... Wow, I do not know how to find my graphics card. Graphics settings, here we go, maybe. It would help- device- where's my device manager? It is... Display adapters NVIDIA GeForce RTX 27. That's my GPU. Or is it the Ryzen? Wait, I'm confused. Man, I don't know computer parts. Oh, it's fine. We were just a little surprised, that's all. Imagine it! It's been 12 long months since I left my hometown. And here I am, in a frightful fix in a foreign land. Oh, now we're just... Now we're just doing... Now we're just doing cartoon voices. A g -g 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 ghost Let's go, Freddy! I feel embarrassed when I do stuff like that. I don't know why. Anyway... Hearing the sweet, sentimental tones of a compatriot's voice here in this damp, dark hellhole was a... Uh, most monumentally moving moment! Yo, this dude is just straight up, uh... What's his name? George Joestar. Who could have guessed this new client Lord Strongheart assigned to us would turn out to be a fellow Japanese? 
Ah! What compassion my fellow countrymen show! To dispatch a first-class lawyer all the way from Japan to defend a mere foreign student! Noble! Nurturing! Never failing! Nippon! A, a first-class lawyer? Buddy, I think you got the wrong idea here. Oh, God. Polly want a cracker? Ah! Oh, my God. It is ridiculous how many photos I've taken in the last few years. All right. Well, let's just say this is a practice of voice acting and acting in general, so you won't get pra to practice. Uh, let's see. Uh, I have a AMD Ryzen 7 2700, as well as HyperX 16 gigabyte DDR4 26666 SD RAM 2x x8 gigabytes HyperX, uh, and then the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070. Yeah, my voice is my voice is almost shot, which sucks because tomorrow is going to be a night where I do all voice acting. <laughs> Dear, I think there's been something of a misunderstanding here. It's not it's not an RTX 3070, though. It's not a 3030 30 series. It's a 2070, which I got fairly cheap. Mind you, this PC is two years old. I got it June 2019. In fact, I got this computer the same day as Nintendo's E3 presentation that year. Um... I got it the same day that ba that Hero and Banjo-Kazooie were revealed for Smash. That's what I need to name this computer. Oh my god, I figured it out. Hold on. I'm going to I'm going to do that right now actually. I never I never gave this computer a name in the uh in the uh in the PC name. After you restart your PC name... Okay, restart later. It's very functional. Yes, it is. Um, <clears throat> so, I've, I've always had a habit of having computers with names. Uh, mostly because you can name a PC now. Like, there's an actual name function on the PC. But when I got my first dedicated laptop, it was from a friend of mine who called, the, who called her laptop uh, Gerico. Which is a shortened name of, of Fawful's Japanese name, which was also, coincidentally, my tier 2 uh, sub emote um, from Mario and Luigi. And then uh, when I got my, my my own laptop after that, I named it um, Garter Belt, because at the time I was watching Panty and Stocking. <laughs> I literally got the laptop like the week the last episode aired. And then when that laptop broke and I got my... Uh, I got another bar uh, donated laptop from another friend... Uh, I named it Gulliver because uh, Animal Crossing Pocket Camp was still popular at the time and because I wanted another G name and then I got this computer to replace that and I never gave it a name and now I just remembered. I got the same day Banjo-Kazooie was revealed for Smash. So uh, I'm going to name it Gruntilda because it starts with a G and that's the name of the villain from Banjo-Kazooie. It works out perfectly. Anyway, that's my hyperfixation for the moment. Uh, oh dear, I think there's been something of a misunderstanding here. I wonder, would you be so kind as to tell us what's happened? Why you've been detained as a suspect, for example? Yes, yes, I can. I will. You shan't stay sullen and silent. I'm not quite sure I understand what he means, but he seems happy. Yes, he does. I just hope he actually has a good reason to be. Thank you for your cooperation. I'm a lawyer, as you said. My name is Ryanosuke Naruhodo. And I am Naruhodo san's judicial assistant, Susato Mikotaba. I am a visiting student sent here by our government. <clears throat> Notably, notoriously named Natsume. Sosake Natsume. Interesting. He's also a student. Jesus fucking Christ stalking, the cell stinks like hell. Yes, yes, that symbol is one of our great empire's first-rate lawyers! Which means, of course, you'll stand by my side, you'll defend me! 
Oh, no. Sorry, that wasn't why I was showing it to you. Then why else would you show me that? Oops. In his hindsight, it probably wasn't the best idea. So, Seki Natsume. So, Seki Natsume-san. What an unusual name. Call me Soseki, please. I'm a poet, you see? A writer of haiku. It's something of a nom de plume. A nom de plume? You mean an alias? That's right, Naruhodo-san. No, no, no! Don't be so prosaic! It's much more refined than that! And haiku? That really reminds me of home. Did I hear you say that you were a visiting student sent over here by the government? Yes, yes, that's right. A year ago, I was told to go and study English. First, I had to suffer that misery. And now this! It's beyond the pale! Suffer that misery? Did you not want to study here? No! I mean, I've had an interest in Great Britain for some years, of course. Is he, a uh, schizophrenic? Maybe. Oh, but... Just because the government tells you to do something doesn't mean you can do it? No! What do you mean? If they told me to study English literature, that I could have understood. That's my field. But no, they told me to study the English language. Utterly, unbelievably, unjustably, unreasonable. I see. Only the other day I was told to send a report about my first year here. I tendered a blank piece of paper. Wise words on white washi. You must be a man of great standing. Oh, yes, so I'm often told. And often like to be told, it seems. So Seki Natsume, a scholar sent to Britain by the Japanese government to further his study his in his study of English. He's a defendant accused of attempted murder. 33. Oh my god, he's younger than me. Why do they design, like, a 30-year-old to look like that? Could you perhaps tell us exactly why you've been arrested, Soseki-san? Soseki, not Soseki. I didn't do it! I didn't commit that atrocious murder! Murder? Oh, no. No, no, it's all alright. The woman didn't actually die, did she? But she was stabbed with a knife! Right before my eyes! Before your eyes, you mean you saw the attacker? I didn't see anyone. What? If I'd seen the person who did it, do you think I'd be locked up in here? Oh dear, it seems this case is becoming rather complicated. Why me? Why me? Why did that silly woman have to be stabbed in front of me? It's the curse, the curse of London! It's incredibly, inexcusably, irritatingly inconvenient. So Soseki-san was there at the scene, but he didn't see the attacker. It's vital that we find out more about the case. It was an accursed evening, just after the snow had started to clear and heavy with fog. I had been the bookshop to the bookshop to buy some books, and I was on my way back to my accursed lodgings. Sure the bookshop wasn't accursed too? Oh, excuse me. That was Reno's game. As I was walking along that accursed pavement, I could make out the sole silhouette of another ahead of me. A woman wearing a green overcoat she was, and just as I went to overtake her... Is it just Mr. Crocker from the Fairly Odd Parents? Yeah, kinda. She suddenly let out a little scream, and collapsed onto the cold hard slabs of stone at my feet. Another woman with blonde hair. This seems to be a very, very reoccurring thing here. How terrible. I called out to the woman, but she didn't move. It... it was like a... ghostly, ghoulish, grim graveyard. Slight exaggeration there, perhaps. I was terrified. I had to get away from there. So I ran as fast as my legs would carry me back to my accursed lodgings. That's... not good. They'll... they'll say it was shameful, I know, to run away like that. Tell me, Sosaki-san. Eh. To be turned, have you seen those magical fairies? Oh, God, that was terrible. 
Tell me, Soseki-san. Was the victim an acquaintance of yours? Don't be ridiculous! Do you think I know any of these fair-haired English? Any young woman at that? Oh, I guess... I guess, uh... English people in general just had fair hair. Favorite cartoon? Um... At one point, I would... I'm different, shy, timid, unsure, I can't talk to people. Uh, yeah, oh man, it's, yeah, Adventure Time is a very tempting answer. Uh, Invader Zim I really liked when I was younger. Um, I also liked the, the old Nicktoons, the old cartoon cartoons. I did indeed watch, uh, Friendship is Magic as well. Um, I'm a car, I love cartoons in general. So, I, I can't really say I have an absolute favorite one. Um, but there are definitely ones I hold in high regard. Megas XLR is one I really like, which a lot of people probably know, but probably don't know that well. I have the entire series on uh, on DVD. I, I see a young woman unknown to Soseki-san. At the time it happened... Who else did you see nearby? Did anybody pass you? Regrettably, apart from myself and the woman, I didn't see a soul. No one? Oh, great. So the victim was unknown to you, and there was nobody else in the street at the time. That creates something of a conundrum, doesn't it? Hmm? What conundrum? If we're gonna throw back Rugrats was good, but got to go with Spongebob. Oh, Spongebob's a classic. I mean, that show, it's still going on. It's great. My girlfriend loves Spongebob. Conundrum. What do you mean, Sasato-san? What's the conundrum? Well, if what Soseki-san has just told us is true, there's something I can't explain. He says that he didn't know the victim and that there was no one else at the scene. Then he apparently fled without having been seen. I did, I did? But if that's the case, surely this man has to be the culprit? Ah, you! What did you just say? Nothing, I didn't say anything. Oops, perhaps I thought that a little too loudly. Really, it's 2 a.m., yeah. It is indeed 2 a.m. Actually, that's not what was troubling me. What I was thinking was, how did Sosuke-san actually come to be arrested? Sorry? He didn't touch the victim, and there was nobody at the scene to see him. So how did the police ever discover that he was there in the first place? Oh, yes, she's right. It... It was him. That accursed great detective. He led the police to me! Of all the bad luck! Accursed great detective? Could it be? I shall never forget that man's name as long as I live! With this haughty laugh and his self-proclaimed greatness! Bash, brick-headed, busybody, be gone! May you be cursed until the end of your days, Hair Lock Sholmes! I... I knew it. M Mr. Sholmes? Well, I didn't expect to hear that name from this man's lips, that's for sure. He's saying it, he's saying it like, like it's air, like his name is Lock Sholmes. And they're calling him air like the German word. But, uh, it's because they don't realize his name is Herlock. It was the morning after that nightmare had unfolded on the pavement before me. I was gnawing on a sliver of hard cheese when some men suddenly burst into the door. They started shouting at me, Tis the police, put the weapon down. Yes, it was a thin sliver, and yes, it was hard, but it wasn't eating a weapon. Disgusting dietary discrimination devils. You clearly had a trying morning yesterday. And there he was in the middle of all the policemen, grinning like a Cheshire cat. That Erlock Sholmes. It's it's actually just Herlock Sholmes. He's English. I've since found out that he's a famous name in detection here in London. Yes, the great detective is really very well known. And his overly sharp mind managed to deduce my whereabouts, apparently. He thinks I'm the knife-wielding Batman. Me, this weak, stooped kitten of a man. I wonder what great deduction possessed process led him to this conclusion. Do you mean to say that Mr. Sholmes' deduction was the only reason the police arrested you? 
That would be really most unreasonable. Well, um, the thing is, I was, I was thrown into a panic when they barged their way in. Of course you were, that's only natural. I was terrified and trembling, and they kept throwing the question after question at me. In impossible English! Fiendish foreign film flemery! If he air humps one more time, I'm going to hit my head against the wall. <coughs> well, we are in England. You can't really blame them for questioning you in English. Good point, good point, but my mind went blank. I, I knew I had to answer, but I didn't know what to say. So I just kept repeating things like, Yes, I do, and I'm fine. Next thing I knew, I was in manacles. And before I knew it, I was thrown in here. Oh dear, I'm afraid... That's hardly surprising. I'm fine. He's not fine now. He's Apollo Justice. He's screaming, I'm fine. Mr. Naruhodo Esquire. Oh, you could just call me Naruhodo, and when we're speaking English, a simple Mr. is more than enough. Oh, yes, um, alright, yes, they've... they've really got me. This country's poisoning my mind. But please, I beg you to defend me in court tomorrow. You can tell them what really happened. You'll do it, won't you? Well, um... Why? Why? Why is it so hard to say yes to me? Well, the thing is, I'm just a student like yourself, on a study tour. A, a student? I've defended a case in the Old Bailey, only the one, though. But at this moment in time, I really don't know what I'm supposed to be believing. I'm confused about what just... I'm... Confused about what justice in this country even means. Oh, Naruhodo san. I'm not even the foreign student who was supposed to be here. I'm a sort of locum lawyer, I suppose. But that armband, that's the mark of a defense lawyer from our great empire! It's a keepsake from the man who should have been here. He was my best friend. A keepsake? I know exactly what they're saying about me. Oh, what do you mean? The lawyers, all the British defense lawyers, they won't defend me. Goodness, what, why do you say that? For the same reason as you noted before when it happened. There was only one victim of myself around, and I ran away from the scene of the crime. I'm not a fool. I know it looks as though I must be the culprit. It must be very hard for you, Soseki-san. And anyway, I'm a student from overseas. I'm just a foreign nobody to them. Someone not to be trusted. I heard them openly laughing about me before, in my earshot without any compunction at all. Any trial for this man would be a waste of time, they said. And, of course, the foreigner did it. They even had the gall to say that man doesn't understand half of what's being said anyway. That's awful! They're wrong! I've studied more English than half of the policemen out there on the streets. That... that... looks a lot like, uh... That looks like, uh... It looks like the pose Larry takes. Uh, when he's frustrated in the original cert series. Excuse me. Traveled halfway around the world to learn about these people's country and its great history. But no one here wants to listen to a man with a strange accent. They all hate me. So at the very least, I'd like to entrust my fate to someone who can listen to me in my native tongue. You could do it, couldn't you? When I look into your eyes, I can see it. I can see what you've been through. <clears throat> Sosuke-san, it's just that... Give me a little time, please. Hmm? I'll do what I can, for the time being. What do you mean? What do you mean? We shall investigate this case as thoroughly as possible. If we could find some clues, it will give us a much better chance, I'm sure. Oh, yes, yes, thank you. I'll be here, all alone, waiting for you. Locum student, Mr. Naruhodo Esquire. We should be going then, Naruhodo-san. 
We can have a case to, we have a case to prepare for. Prison cell with the defendant, Mr. Sosuke Natsumi, is being held. It's quiet and the light from the candle is dim, but there's little chance of sleeping. Visiting a cold, dark jail cell brings home the reality of crime and punishment. Oh, that's interesting. Briar Road. <coughs> oh, man. My throat. Nineteenth of February, Briar Rod. Ugh. I'm sorry. I am really, I am really pushing myself tonight. But I have to fill at least another seventy minutes. Who oh boy? <coughs> Look at that bike. Nice wheel. So this is where it happened. Briar Road. William Robbins. Oh man, I love that actor. He's my favorite actor in, in, in this iteration of the reality. Really though, I, I Robin Williams was great. I miss him. Ah, look, Mr. Norohodo. Look at that regulation metal helmet. It's unmistakable. The men of Scotland Yard are here. They're investigating as we speak. That is their job, you know. But Mr. Naruhodo, to see one with their own eyes. <clears throat> no, I think I can keep going. I'm just, um... I'm just really... Uh... I need, I need some throat coat. <laughs> They're often depicted in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, but I never dreamt I'd ever come close to this one. Ugh. I never see... Uh, whatever. They're often depicted in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, but I never dreamt I'd ever come this close. To a real Bobby's helmet. What? The helmet? <laughs> of course. I have to try one on one day. Well, uh, I hope your haddy dream comes true. What's the Japanese delegation doing here? Oh, Inspector Gregson! This isn't on the torch trail, as I'm fairly sure you're aware. Yes, of course, we're here to investigate. So you've been to the holding cells, then? What do you make of the criminal? He's not a criminal, as you put it, Inspector. You get it by the two words, no guy likes hearing? Uh, erectile dysfunction? That would kill me, if I heard it. He's not a criminal, as you put it, Inspector. He's a suspect. <laughs> we'll see about that. You Japanese like to stick together, I suppose. Well, do what you will. It doesn't bother me. The bloke's in court tomorrow, whatever happens. And the verdict's a foregone conclusion. Ugh, the stone-cold air of rejection. Take heart. London at this time of year is full of stone-cold air. That makes it worse somehow. That's not- that's close, but not it. You got hit by the I'm fine. Ooh. I hate when someone tells me that when it's clearly not fine. Tell me about Scotland Yard, Inspector. Ever since I read about it in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, I've been fascinated by the place. Yard is the most sophisticated policing organization you'll find anywhere in the world, ma'am. I think sour cream... Oh, sour cream left, yeah. Oh, and you know, I've always dreamt of wearing a real Bobby's helmet. It does make them look the part, seeing that policeman there with his helmet on. You certainly get the sense that this is a man who will take no nonsense in his duty of protecting the city. Oh, yes, doesn't he look wonderful? 
You know, London Bobby is hard going, I can tell you. Oh, really? First thing in the morning, you know what he does. Goes round and rouses all the laborers on his beat so they can get off to work. What? He wakes people up? Yep. Raps on their windows with a long pole. Did it myself, going back a bit. I had no idea. The Bobby works for the people of the town. It's just another one of his duties. And after that, he starts tirelessly patrolling the streets all day long. He has to cover 20 miles a day. It's for regulation distance. I can't really imagine how far that is, but it sounds like a long way. Let me see... 20 miles, that's approximately the distance from Tokyo to Yokohama. On foot? That's that's definitely taking things a step too far. When it gets dark, of course, he has the important job of letting all the gas slip street lamps. Oh my. And I suppose in between all those duties, Bobbies are expected to investigate cases as well? And chase after criminals trying to evade the law. When do I normally stream? Till about 3 o'clock. Uh, but lately I've been going longer just because I, I wanted to make up for not streaming for over 10 days. I'm not sure you could call it in between exactly, more alongside, but yes. They're expected to handle those jobs as well. We do have men keeling over from time to time, I admit. Ah, good crunch culture. I'd always dreamt of wearing one of those helmets, as I said. But it's with a heavy heart that I shall have to relinquish that dream to you, Mr. Naruhodo. Your heavy heart will be my heavy head if you do. It happened around five in the evening, two days ago, just there on that open bit of pavement. The victim, a young woman, was stabbed with a blade from behind. Is it right that the lady is still unconscious now? You mentioned that she's still being treated in the hospital. I never said she was a lady. Truth is, unless she comes around pretty smartish, we won't be able to find out much about her at all. I suppose that means they haven't been able to take a statement from her, of course. Here's a map of the local area I happen to have on me. You could take it if you want. Really? Are you sure? It's your policy to give lawyers defending suspects the odd bit of information to go on. Hot cocoa tastes like coffee. I could take or leave that either way. I, I don't hate coffee like I used to, but I like cocoa a lot. I haven't actually accepted the job yet, but still. Thank you, Inspector. We gratefully accept. Street map of the local area showing where the victim was found. Anyway, as far as we know, there was no one else on the scene other than the victim and your fellow countrymen. Who did it, do you think? Not much of a head-scratcher, is it? Well, I know Mr. Natsumi is also claiming to have not have seen anyone else around, but... But just because he didn't see anyone... It doesn't mean we can be sure that nobody else was present. I'm sorry to have to tell you, but we most certainly can be sure. How? Because, ma'am. The precise moment of the stabbing didn't go unnoticed. It- What?! We have two very reliable witnesses, no less. Ah! It was a typical foggy London day, and your client obviously didn't see them. There are witnesses now? Who are these witnesses, Inspector? A fellow and his wife, and the man's one of the most reliable and respected citizens in all of London. Well, we've heard that before, and we saw what happened to one of those most reliable citizens. It ended up being a lone shark, and they ended up dying. He's a copper from Scotland Yard. Ah. Uh, a, a policeman? I drink coffee, but those two shouldn't mix. Well, then you've never had the Dunkachino. Not Al anymore. It's Dunk. Uh, but yeah, I used to work at Dunkin' Donuts. The Dunkachino is, is a hot chocolate mixed with uh, coffee, but it's all powdered. It's not actually hot chocolate and coffee mix. It's like a powdered hot chocolate coffee mix. So, hot chocolate, but with powdered coffee in it. Sorry, I need to stop for a second. Crunch. 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 Hey 
Hey, Sour Cream. Welcome back. That might change things. And this policeman just happened to be there at the exact moment the woman was attacked? Nothing peculiar about that man, part and parcel of being a hobby. Catching them banging the act and all that. Um, do you think it might be possible for us to ask that policeman a few questions? I'm not... Stop making me say... Stop making me say self-affirming things, damn it. I'm a pretty cool burb if I do say myself myself. Ah, 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 no, please no more squawking. I, I, that's not... A little too much for me right now. Be my guest. You can ask him what you like. In court tomorrow. Oh. I have no doubt he'll be summoned as a witness. That'll give you something to look forward to. Hi. That's that, then. He's got no intention of letting us meet the man beforehand, it seems. A policeman witnessed the incident. As your judicial assistant, I must warn you that this could make our job very difficult indeed. Yes, as a non-judicial assistant, I could have warned me of that, too. Oh, yes, one more thing, Inspector. What? The person who led you to the suspect. I hear that it was Mr. Sherlock Holmes. What are you bringing him up for? Is it something I said? The color is drained from his cheeks. <clears throat> Twitchy Japanese bloke goes on trial tomorrow. Are you going to defend him or not? Well, uh... It makes no difference to me, but I will just say this. No London lawyer want this salt wound to touch that case with a barge pole. Because the prosecution is being handled by the Reaper of the Bailey, you mean? There's no way to save that man now. It's a waste of time trying. It's all a bit strange, though. Sorry? The Reaper. He hasn't appeared in court once for a good few years now. <clears throat> yes, we did hear something to that effect. And the only people he usually bothers with the real are with the, well, the only people he usually bothers with are the real scum, the master criminals, the violent ones. M master criminals. The, the violent ones. That's right. He handpicks his victims. Only deals with those guaranteed to go to the gallows for their sins. Think you ever played the Attack on Titan game? Nah. Not the. Nah, probably not. I've heard none of them are really that great, honestly, and also, I've kind of fallen off Attack on Titan after all the things that have come out about that show and, and, the, and the person who wrote it. I'm just like, eh, maybe I shouldn't. Excuse me. But Mr. Natsume surely wouldn't hang for what he's accused of, surely. That's just my point, Sunshine. Yes, the young woman was stabbed, but it didn't kill her. Couldn't even say the intent was there. So this isn't the sort of case I'd be expecting the Reaper to want his sink his teeth into, for want of a better phrase. What happened? I mean, the guy is just a, he's an Imperialist, the guy that wrote Attack on Titan. I'm pretty sure he was a Holocaust denier, too. I don't know if that's necessarily true, but... Uh, and the, the story of Attack on Titan kind of has a lot of, like, Holocaust allegory in it. Like, not... not and not in an informative way, either, in more of a... Uh, the Jewish people were bad guys kind of way. So, uh... It's not... It's, it's not something I... It's, it's not something I, I know enough about that I want to talk about. But it's definitely something that people bring up a lot when you mention the show. That said, I do... I did watch the dub to where it currently is up to, which is about, I think, half a season from the end. And it's... As an action show, it's not terrible. I applaud the animators and the voice actors. Uh, just, you know... The actual show is not that great. I, and apparently the ending sucks, too. From what I've seen, from what I've heard. So this isn't the sort of case I'd be expecting the Reaper to want to sink his teeth into, for want of a better order at that. Well, it's not exactly a minor infraction, is it? Also, it's worth, it's worth noting, I didn't watch it legitimately, so... No money, w no money was exchanged there, don't worry, no support was given. No, there's gotta be more to it, the same reason he's taking an interest. 
Really? What sort of reason, Inspector? I think I can tell what's going on inside the head of that Lord of Darkness. You'll have to ask him yourself at tomorrow's trial. Are we really going to have to face the Reaper again? The Lord of Darkness, as he puts it. The Lord? Who did you hear that name from? Oh, well, um, it was Mr. Natsume who mentioned it. He said that Mr. Sholmes was with the police when they entered his lodgings. I'm sure it was the result of one of Mr. Sholmes' inspirational great deductions that we've proven wrong multiple times, Hisato, so why are you still impressed by them? Fiddle faddle! Ah! That man's an amateur and I'm getting sick and tired of him showing his mug everywhere. Oh. I don't know where he gets his information from, but it, it, he turns up at the scene of the crime. Wanders around spouting incomprehensible rubbish, and before you know it, he claims to have solved the case. Yes, he's quite astounding. Why did I buy a leather chair? Hey, I have a leather chair. It's not too bad. Aside from the ass sweat, that's that's pretty bad. He's a great help to Scotland. He he is a great help to Scotland Yard, though, isn't he? Gibble gabble. Ah. Ever seen this before? Oh yes, that's Ranced Magazine. Yeah, we well, no, we have. The wonderful publication in which the adventures of Herlock Sholmes appears. Yes, well, that wonderful publication, as you put it, sees fit to include several of the Yard's detectives in its stories. And the so-called Great Detective makes a mockery of all of us! If you ask anyone at the Yard, it's a misadventure to be included in any Herlock Sholmes tale at all. Well, I suppose there is an element of that. Our socks off, every one of us, only to be frumped by the public thanks to that obnoxious detective. That man's as dangerous to us at Scotland Yard as he is to all of our criminals. That can't really be true, can it, Inspector? Clearly, the great detective and the police have a complex relationship. My motives are very complex. Well, I don't think we're going to get any more useful information out of the detective. Mr. Naruhodo, can I make a suggestion? Oh, yes, what is it? Well, it seems to me, the great burb detective, that we must speak to him about this. By him, do you mean... Mr. Sholmes? Yes, Mr. Herlock Sholmes, exactly. Look at those shining eyes, you can't wait, can you? Well, Mr. Natsume did blame Mr. Sholmes for all of this, didn't he? Yes, he did. He really did. Which makes him an involved party in the case. Are we just going to ignore that? I hope not. I assure you, it's not simply my selfish desire to meet with Mr. Sholmes again. The trouble is, we have no idea the man's address even, so how- It's Baker Street! H how do you know that? You're in bed? <laughs> Alright, I'm going to bed. Alright, I'm in bed. <laughs> it's in the stories, of course. 221B Baker Street, the most famous address in the world. see. Well, there's nothing to stop us from going, I suppose. Briar Road. Calabash Road. Meersham, Sh Meersham Street. Meersham Reet. Yeet! We're gonna try to find our way there before Sasato-san gets any more excited and unpredictable. Hurrah! I'll summon a carriage! So we're to have a reunion already with the great detective, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. Inspector Gregson, could I show you this? Am I supposed to know what that is? I've never seen that insignia before. It's worn by defense lawyers in the Empire of Japan as a symbol of their profession. In other words, it's a worthless trinket here in Great Britain. Oh no, it's very important to me. It... Uh, excuse me, it shows my spirit. Too many fish and chips. An English gentleman keeps, like, keeps things like his spirit very much to himself, I'll have you know. Oh. Don't give up, Mr. Naruhodo. It's too late. He's crushed my spirit already. Thank you again for this. <laughs> Don't mention it. I had someone to the yard fish it out for me, but in the end, I didn't need it. Oh? 
Oh, the case could hardly be simpler, could it? I don't need a map to work out what happened. You can throw it away when you're done with it. Ugh, cold. Hehe, <laughs> what a delightful snowman. I didn't realize the English had a tradition of making snowmen as well. It looks a little creepy, though. Oh, it has a scarf, look. You'd need one if you were out in this freezing cold all the time. Wish I had one. I'm afraid our budget is somewhat frozen at the moment, too. We certainly can't afford a scarf. Surely the snowman here wouldn't miss his. But the person who made the snowman certainly would. Yes, I know, you're right. Anyway, even if I borrowed it, it wouldn't do much to warm my neck, would it? It's covered in snow. I don't know, I think the Japanese man might be guilty. We already had that issue last case. I don't think that's the case now. You actually can't look at most of the stuff here, huh? There are piles of snow on the pavement here and there, but the road itself is covered in carriage tracks. It seems carriages often travel down Briar Road. It soon disperses all the snow. I slipped over it when I was walking the pavement earlier. It seems like it would be far safer to work on the road walk on the road instead. Oh, but you're rather small, Mr. Norohodo, and dressed on all black. Every coachman might at see you, and you could be flattened by horses. Well, thank you for the rather small concern. Second pick is that the snowman did it. It's one of the officers from Scotland Yard. The police are making sure the crime scene is undisturbed. I have a feeling that if we were to wander too close, we'll be clapped in irons. I think perhaps you're being a little overcautious. We've done nothing wrong, so we have no cause for concern. Oh no, I'm not getting caught out again. Twice is enough. Twice I found myself in handcuffs despite not knowing a thing about what was going on. Yes, you've had some dreadful experiences. I'm sure that's the wide-eyed look of panic you're so prone to. It does you no favors at all. Ugh. This patch of pavement must be where the incident occurred. Yes, it's very wide open space, isn't it? That's true, I can't see anywhere an attacker could have been hiding. Oi, what are you foreigners doing here? Ah! Oh, um, er, uh, we, um, just investigating the scene. Conspiring with that mustache fellow from Japan, are ya? Conspiring? For me to destroy evidence, have ya? Get out of here before I give you an Aiden. Go on. An Aiden? He shoot us away like rats. Yes, we should give him a wide berth, I think. What a disappointing experience. Oh, that's a Scotland Yard carriage. You use vehicles like that to rush to crime scenes and cart away criminals. You're very, you're very well informed, aren't you? It's long been a dream of mine to ride one of those through the streets of London. Well, just pick up a stone and throw it through one of the windows then. That would be me being arrested in order to ride it. Wouldn't it? Still, if it's the only way, help me find a good stone. No, 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 I wasn't serious. Oh, Lord. There's more. I want to buy a peacock mantis shrimp. Mantis shrimp have, like, a million visual receptors in their eyes. Like, way more than humans do. They could see everything. Clouds look so big and heavy in the sky, don't they? And with the dense fog as well, everything looks hazy. It is well, it is known as Foggy London Town. I could just make out some sort of spire through the fog. Looks like it's still being built, though. Aha! Yes, that must be the Crystal Tower, being built for the Great Exhibition that's to open in six months' time. Apparently it's going to be very striking, blazed on all sides in the symbolic centerpiece of the exhibition. It's to be the largest exposition in history, is it? I can't even begin to imagine it. That's a rather typical old brick building, isn't it? I'm sure it has a long and interesting history. Also uppercut the shit out of anything he want they want to, yeah. 
That's a rather... Uh, okay. Well, time certainly seems to have taken its toll on the place. It's crooked and sagging all over. Like my ass. In fact, it looks decidedly worse shape than the other houses around here. We must find some cheap lodgings ourselves as soon as possible. Yes, you're right. Cheap, but ideally with reasonably level floors. Oh, the house... It's all bricked up on this side. Oh, look at the windows of that building there. Are you sure they're windows? Yes, but they're all filled in with bricks. Oh, you're right. I wonder why. Perhaps it's an empty property where nobody lives at the moment. There's smoke coming from the chimneys, though. Oh, dear. Everything still feels very foreign. There's so much we have to learn about this place. Oh, a British bicycle! Look! Although, the wheel is so misshapen, I'm sure it couldn't possibly be ridden anymore. Someone must have been doing some breakneck cycling. It seems bicycles have become extremely popular in London recently. There's even a movement to change women's dress to allow them to ride as well. The bicycle fad won't last. I don't see anyone wanting to ride something like that. Goodness, do you dislike bicycles? No, not at all. I mean, it's not that I dislike them exactly. It's just that any occupation that involves taking both your feet off the firm ground seems... reckless. If you've ever tried walking on stilts and falling into a river, I know you'd agree with me. I'll have to hire a bicycle sometime. You can sit behind me while I ride you around. I am going to take a short uh, step away here. Actually, yeah, because I gotta go for. I'm going for at least another half hour here. Uh, I gotta use the bathroom. Sorry, one moment. All that hydrating is getting to me. Alright, that wasn't too bad. I was gone for what, like a minute? Two minutes? How do I, uh... How do I, uh, change to add timestamps? No, oh, whatever. You said you could sit back while I ride you around in that had undertones whatsoever. Yeah. Alright, I think I've examined everything here. Yep, looks like it. A new location has been added. Sholmes' Suite. 
221 B Baker Street, the home and office of the most famous detective in the world. Can we really visit, do you think? Oh, pinch me. I'm sure I must be dreaming. Thank you very much. It's just up there overlooking the street. Good day. Good day. Thanks again. This is it. The residence of Mr. Herlock Shores. Oh, look at all those plants. Beautiful. Plants. 19th February, 12.53 p.m. Sholmes is sweet. <clears throat> so this is where the great detective makes his living. Feels surreal to be here somehow. It's, is it as described in the stories, Mrs. Sato? Um, Mrs. Sato-san? Many, many famous cases have been solved here in this very room. Oh, I suppose they must have been, yes. I never read the story, so it's hard to get quite as excited about it as she seems to be. The detective chases the villain relentlessly as he disappears into the fog down on an unlit London street. Oh, the thrill of it, the romanticism! Can't you feel your heart thumping in your chest? Can't you, Mr. Naruhodo? Oh, I suppose I can, yeah. So if you don't mind, I'll just stand here and soak up the atmosphere for a while longer. Please, don't mind me. Ah, she's obsessed. Well, it looks like our detective friend isn't home at present. Excuse me, is anybody home? Oh, do we have a visitor? Hello. Is this a big new case for Mr. Sholmes? Uh, hello? Wait, aren't you- Oh, how rude of me. I'll go and make some tea at once. I'm sure it's the same girl. Mrs. Sato, do you see- did you see the girl who was just here? Oh yes, isn't it truly extraordinary? To think that the King of Bohemia came to this very room to ask Mr. Sholmes to take on his case. The, the King of Bavaria, King Wilhelm Gottsreich Sig Sigismund von Ormstein, of course. Sorry, I'm drawing a blank. Forget the adventures of Herlock Sholmes for a moment and look over there. The tea's brewed, and I have a freshly baked cake as well. Ah, it's you! I knew it. Sasato-san recognizes her too. girl who turned up at the end of Mr. McGilded's trial in the defendant's antechamber. I've never met a lawyer from the Far East before. Poor you, having to get straight to work when you've only just arrived in London. Oh, yes, it was... challenging. Well, I'll try this tea. It's my special blend, you know. Oh, um, thank you. Is the tea supposed to look that color? Oh my, what a fragrant yet mellow flavor! Hey, it's a winner! I tried blending different leaves together to alleviate fatigue, you know, see? You must be exhausted after your long voyage here, and you have another ticklish trial tomorrow! Oh, and you're to defend a Japanese man? I do wish you lots and lots of luck. Um... Did Mr. Sholmes tell you about us by any chance? Oh, you know Hurley, don't you? Hurley? Mr. Holmes to you, surely. Mr. Sholmes is... Wait... Mr. Sholmes, okay. Mr. Sholmes was a fellow passenger on the boat that brought us to Great Britain, you see. Was he really? Well, I had no idea. 
I'm afraid he'll lose out on an errand again today, even though he's just returned from overseas. Wait a minute. We met this girl for the first time ever yesterday after the trial, and only briefly at that. How on earth does she know so much about us? Did she deduce all those things, do you think? And perhaps more to the point, why is she here in Mr. Sholmes' suite? Oh, silly me, I haven't introduced myself, have I? It's a great pleasure to meet you both. My name is Iris Wilson. I live here together with Hurley. Ah, uh, Iris, is it? What a lovely name. What? What's the matter? No, wait, this this can't be. Did did you did you say that your your name is Wilson? What's the matter with Sasato san? Why is she so flustered all of a sudden? <clears throat> yes, that's right. And what are your names? Oh, um, I'm Ryanosuke Narahodo, a lawyer from Japan. Oh, sorry. My, I'm Mr. Naruhoto's judicial assistant, Sasato Mikotoba. It's wonderful to meet you. Lovely. Susie and Runo. Got it. Susie? And Runo? There's more to this girl than meets the eye. I have so many questions for her, I don't know where to start. Yes, and so do I. Yeah, look at the armband. Iris, can I show you this? Oh, how exciting! What is it? Tell me all about it. Oh, actually, I was hoping you might be able to tell me something about it, if anything comes to mind. Why would it? Well, no, I suppose it wouldn't. Tell me, tell me! I want to hear everything! This hasn't gone according to plan. Translators note, plan it means keikaku. I do like this fireplace. It's one of the best things I've seen since we arrived in the country, in fact. Lingering beside the fire and watching the flames flicker and dance in the grate. Ah, it's so relaxing. You can't relax, not when there's so many interesting things on the mantelpiece. Oh, it's just as described in the stories. It is? Yes, exactly. Inside that Persian slipper, for example. Are my chocolates for elevensies? And transfixed by that large jackknife. Is my shopping list for the market. Oh, it's not quite how I remember it being described in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes. Poor Sasato san, she looks crushed. Good lord, this place is huge. A mystery shoe, a curious hammer, some mysterious dancing men, a bust of Napoleon. Ah, oh, what an entrancing collection. The first time in my life that I've seen a lonely old shoe displayed as an ornament. Oh, those are all mementos that Hurley has collected from his past cases. Really? Even the bust? Yes, that's right. When the mood takes him, he likes to throw it on the floor and smash it to dust. Poor defenseless emperor. Mr. Sholmes destroys it? Yes, and then he buys a new one. You make it sound like he has the temperament of an insane sculptor. Ah, uh, how entrancingly bohemian of him. Like that huge metal chest is being used as a table for a tea and coffee. It seems very sturdy with an equally sturdy lock. Mr. Darahoto, you mustn't go around opening things. I always have to keep an eye on you, don't I? You're very mischievous. How did you come to that conclusion? Oh, that chest. It contains some of my most valuable things. And that smile tells me you're not going to give us any clue about what they are. All sorts of things on those shelves. Chemistry apparatus, pokes, papers, and lots of things I've never seen before. It's all heaped up so high I can't help feeling that the whole lot is going to topple at any moment. I keep telling Hurley not to cram so much on those shelves. Good advice. He wanted to look something up in those books a little while ago. But it was so tightly wedged in he couldn't get it out. So he went and bought a new copy instead.
Uh, I've seen pictures of Western musical instruments like this. It's called a violin, isn't it? Of course it is. Mr. Sholmes is renowned for his violin playing. Oh, really? Absolutely. It's often explained in the stories. It's inspirational, Mr. Naruhodo. Inspirational! I immediately started playing the Kodo, which was the closest Japanese stringed instrument I could find. It's a shame you couldn't bring it with you to London. Oh, yes. Well... Papa was beaming when I asked him if he would buy me one. But after a while, he asked if I would only practice when he was out of the house. So now it's merely an ornament in my room. That must have been an awkward conversation. Second-rate strings awarded. Why- why are there all those bullet holes on the wall up there? Was Mr. Sholmes trying to shoot a pestery fly or something? Mr. Sholmes would never do something so reckless. No? Those are the letters VR, standing for Victoria Regina. It's Latin for Queen Victoria. So you mean he shot the queen into the wall? In a moment of boredom, Mr. Sholmes adorned the wall with a patriotic sign, that's all, as pistol practice. Excuse me. Oh man, I'm getting kind of hungry. Right, that makes perfect sense now. It's exactly as described in the stories. Oh, this is delightful. I'm not sure that real explanation is any less reckless than shooting a fly, personally. It's patriotic, Mr. Naruhodo. Patriotic! They're minerals, Marie. Jesus! What on earth is that huge over-the-top machine? That's the great analytoscope. It can analyze anything. Really, anything at all. That's... that's absolutely incredible one of Hurley's inventions. It took him a whole year. He said it was to help him with his investigations. What sort of things has he analyzed with it? Do you know? Well, actually, he hasn't used it for anything yet. Oh, why not? Apparently, on the evening he finally completed it, it suddenly occurred to him. I don't actually have anything I need to analyze. Oh, dear. How about you, Runo? Do you have anything you'd like to analyze? The only thing that springs to mind is this machine itself. Hey, Sour Cream, welcome back. I like that shoe. I want shoes like that. Curly toes. What a beautiful English tea set, and so neatly arranged. It's a favorite pastime of mine, a cup of herbal tea in the afternoon. Tea made of herbs? Sorry, herbs, as they say in this game. That's right, I grow all sorts of herbs in this garden so I can experiment with different blends. One moment, don't go away. I'll brew a pot of the special blend I came up with earlier today. She looks delighted. I only hope it's safe to drink. Ah, that's my blackboard where I note down ideas. Oh, interesting. Let's see. Black Peter. What does that mean? Don't you want to hear what Iris has to say? You got a haircut. That was a quick haircut. I'll come back to that blackboard later. That's a charming little white shelf and full of charming little bottles, too. My hair looks like a Shin Megami Tensei Pro Tag. Nice. Oh, yes, but don't touch any of those. They might explode. I explode Are they exotic chemicals? Do you use them for exciting experiments? Yes, indeed. As a Hurley always says. Chemistry is an explosive science. Sorry? I agree. A single discovery can, can trigger an explosion of innovation all over around the world. Perhaps he just meant it literally. Hair makes me look like a, I will shout persona. <laughs> Either way, mental note, do not touch any bottle that belongs to Iris. What on 
Earth is that big black lump over there. Ah, oh, that fascinating thing is called a typewriter. It's a machine that allows you to write on paper without needing a pen. I'm not, I'm not doing any more squawks, I'm sorry. My throat is too shot for that. And wizardly quickly, too. Oh, that sounds like it could be very useful for someone like me with a terrible handwriting. Oh, my throat is kind of hurting. Iris Wilson, 10. An extraordinarily young girl who lives with Mr. Sholm. She has a degree in medicine as the author of a popular series of short stories. It was you that we ran into yesterday, wasn't it? At the Old Bailey. Yes, that's right. You were ever so helpful. Thank you so much. Oh no, not at all. I'm so sorry we couldn't have been more welcoming. But at the time, we did have a rather large gun pointed at us. So that's why Iris acts like Sholmes, yep. Like this? Ah, uh, thinking back now, you left with Miss Lestrade in tow, didn't you? Oh yes, that awkward witness, Gina Lestrade. Oh, Ginny? Yes, she's a professional pickpocket. So we found out. It was very naughty of her to pinch my invention like that. Are you referring to the trial-disrupting gun-like contraption? Exactly, so I followed her, you see, to get it back. I don't know what happened. Iris dragged her away to apologize, and that was it. Perhaps I should think about fitting a self-destruct mechanism in my inventions. This girl is dangerous. Anyway, I brought Ginny back here after that, so she could apologize to my trusty technician. Sorry, your technician? Hurley, of course, silly. Hurley? Yes, Herlock, Herlock Sholmes. We live here together. I, I had no idea the great detective had such an interesting young daughter. Daughter? Not likely. What? I wouldn't call him Hurley if he was my father, would I? Well, then, what is your relationship with Mr. Sholmes? Well, I expect you found out that uh, the lodgings of any kind in London are very expensive. So the solution is to share the cost with a partner, a roommate. Your... Roommates? I hope you don't mind me asking, Iris, but how old are you? Ten at last this year. Well, what of your mother and father? Oh, no. They're not around. Oh, I see. I wonder what the story is there. Oh, yes, there's something I must ask you. <coughs> of course, go ahead. Go ahead, Susie. I'm a very great fan of the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, and... Oh, you have a copy of Ranch Magazine! Yes, I read every issue. It's delivered all the way to Japan on a ship. Oh, this is so exciting. My stories are being read on the other side of the world. My stories? That's right. Hurley is always solving such amazing cases, you see. And he tells me all about them. They really are quite fascinating. It'd be such a shame if I was the only one who ever heard them, don't you think? Goodness. Last night, he was telling me all about a new case he just solved on a steamship traveling from a faraway land. So I was just in the middle of typing up the manuscript for the next issue before you came. So you... you are the author. Yes, I'll let you in on a secret if you like. I'm going to call this latest adventure The Speckled Band. The Speckled Band? That's certainly very familiar. Yep, and they're roommates. Of course, I always change one or two details in the stories, here and there. This time, I had the idea of making a venomous snake be the cause of all the trouble. Oh, so those opening cutscenes we see every time are the Ranced Magazine versions of, uh, what's actually happening. Which is why the opening of the last, uh, case had the, sn the venomous snake. What's my favorite vine? Anything by Avery Monson. Uh, if you ever saw his work, he does, like, repeating videos. Look up Avery Monson uh, Vine compilation on YouTube. There's surely a good collection of them on there. He's got a very, very big head. And a very, very small body. That man. Well, he's got an average-sized body. He just has a really big head. Oh, that was Mr. Sholmes' first thought as well, actually. Excuse me. 
Yes, and of course I know that a snake might not be a credible fit for the facts of the case exactly, but... Mine is an avocado, thanks. <laughs> it's a story. Some poetic license is justified to make it more thrilling, I think. Don't you? So, do you mean to say... Are the stories about Mr. Sholmes and that published rants that are published in Rants Magazine... Blah, 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 blah. All written by me? Yes, on my wonderful and very modern typewriter. Ooh, a vine of his? I can't really. His vines are more visual gags than... words. But, but all the stories I've ever read... were written by a doctor of medicine! Dr. John H. Wilson! Sato-san's getting more and more worked up. Ah, yes, that's me. I mean, my name really is Wilson. But, but what about the doctor of medicine part? That's all true, too. I am a doctor of medicine. No, at ten years old? At ten years old? Well, that's quite incredible. But, but, but... Dr. Wilson is an English gentleman! Do the vine road work? I don't know the ro vine road work. Ah, yes. I did alter the settings slightly for the stories to be more compelling. Oh! Well, it sounds a little strange, doesn't it? A great detective with a ten-year-old girl in tow. I suppose it does, yes. Of course, it's Sato san. She looks like our whole world is just falling apart. Um, about before. Yes, yes? What's on your mind, Runo? Do tell me. How did you know that I was a lawyer and we just arrived in London, I mean? Oh man, I'm sorry. Yes, oh, and that we have a difficult trial tomorrow. How did you know all that? Oh, that's what you mean. Please, tell us how you did it. Explain every detail. Of course, I'd be delighted. Although, there's really no mystery. Now, let's begin. Iris Wilson is proud to present her Logic and Reasoning Spectacular. First of all, I already knew that you were a lawyer, Runo. After all, I met you yesterday at the Old Bailey in the Defendant's Antechamber. But you also said that we'd only just arrived in London. How did you know that? I observed a passport and travel ticket protruding from your breast pocket. Oh! So I was reasonably confident that you must have only just arrived in the country. And on top of that... You accepted a case against that particular prosecutor, telling me you were unaware of London's court affairs. The Reaper of the Bailey? I walked right into that one, didn't I? Then I noticed a red ink stamp on the back of Susie's hand. You were given that when you visited the local prison to meet with a suspect, weren't you? Earlier today. Ah! They use those stamps to keep a close eye on comings and goings, you see. I... I didn't realize. And a red stamp is only used for people visiting foreign inmates. That told me that even though you had only yesterday concluded the trial of Magnus McGilder, the two of you had already caused to visit a foreign inmate at a local prison. However, neither of you was wearing a particularly sad expression on your face, so I concluded that the prisoner was unlikely to be a friend or a relative. It led me to believe that you must have accepted a new case. I... I see. But how could you have known that trial is tomorrow? Well, having barely been home a few hours yesterday, Hurley solved yet another case. It obviously amused him. He told me that he caught a Japanese man who was bawling and trembling. A Japanese man? Well, clearly that must have been... Mr. Natsume. Now, Rudo has that fancy Japanese sword. And I think your outfit is called a kimono, isn't it, Susie? Well, anyway, it was clear to me that you both come from Japan yourselves. So I put two and two together and decided you must be defending the Japanese man Hurley caught. And there was only one conclusion those facts could lead me to. You both came here to ask Hurley about the case. There's a note on the mantelpiece that says the man's trial will be tomorrow. 
Hilly is always stabbing his notes with a knife, you know. Yes, she has logic powers. He is silly. And that's all there is to it, really. Thank you for listening. I'm Iris Wilson, and that was one of my great deductions. Well, was it a winner? Were my deductions correct? They... they were spot on. That was amazing, Iris. Truly a great deduction. Man... Oops, sorry. You even managed a certain something of Mr. Sholmes' delivery. <clears throat> oh, well, I was just copying early style for that. This really is good news. You could tell us all about the case involving the Japanese man. You will, won't you, Iris? How did you know I'm Japanese? Walks in wearing Japanese clothing. Please! So yesterday, Mr. Sholmes apprehended a Japanese man, you were saying. Yes. Hurley had just arrived back in London after a sea voyage, but the police were waiting for him at the railway station to take him directly to the crime scene. Ah, the great detective is a popular man, it seems. Apparently, a woman was stabbed on a quiet street somewhere in town. There were witnesses who had seen a short, shifty-looking, stooped man running away from the scene. A short, shifty-looking, stooped man... Mr. Natsume, beyond any doubt. So Seki-san said that no, he didn't see anybody else on the street at all. But it seems there were witnesses, after all. Curly used his great deductive powers to determine the man's address. It was a lodging room, very nearby. He went directly there with the police, and what did they find? In short, a shifty-looking stooped man shivering in fear. Ugh. Mr. Sholmes' great deduction certainly hit the mark that time. Of course it did, he's a great detective. Still, that means the incident occurred only two days ago. Surely tomorrow is too soon for the trial, isn't it? Definitely. We have no time to investigate properly. Hurley says that London is rife with crime. Oh. Scotland Yard is doing its best, but they can't stay on top of it, apparently. Oh dear. I hadn't realized the situation was so dire. That's why we can't afford to spend too much time investigating cases and trying the criminals in court. Staff and money are both short. Crimes are usually pinned on the first suspicious person. That's terrible! I suppose it's the harsh reality of the workings of the world's greatest justice system. I... I suppose it is, but in that case... I don't hold out much hope for Soseki-san. Thank you for answering so many of our questions, Iris. This has been very informative. Oh, you're most welcome. I've had so much fun. You happen to know where Mr. Sholmes is at the moment? As you guessed, we'd like to ask him some questions about this case as well. Ah, well, I expect Hurley is still investigating the scene. Of the case involving Mr. Natsume, you mean? Yes, Mr. Nuts... Ome? Hurley said he was going to that man's lodgings. If you leave now, you could probably catch him there. Iris, do you know where those lodgings are? Well, I imagine the police are still investigating the scene of the crime themselves, aren't they? Did you happen to come across a detective by the name of Gregson while you were there? Yes, we know Inspector Gregson. Ah, goody. In that case... Give Gregsy this from me, would you? If you do that, I'm sure he'll tell you what you want to know. What is this? five-shilling piece and a postcard, it seems. Hard for Mr. Inspector Gregson with the message on the back from Iris. It reads, Tell the gentleman in black whatever he wants to know. I trust this won't be a problem? Gosh, this will make the inspector help us, will it? Well, thank you, Iris. We'll give it a, we'll give it a try. Good luck, then. I'm going to return to writing my manuscript. The Speckled Band. And I'll be making more special blends of tea, so be sure to stop back again soon. We'd be delighted. Thank you so much, Iris. Well, Mr. Naruhoto, it's back to the scene of the crime. So somewhat dubious that they would exert any influence over the men of Scotland Yard at all. We headed back to the scene with Iris's curious note and one of the world's heaviest silver coins in hand. To be continued.
Uh, as much as I wanted to go for another 10 minutes, this is probably a good spot to just stop. What? No, why is it going to the three? p.m. Looks as though the police are still here, carrying on with their investigation. Perfect, so let's find Inspector Gregson as quickly as possible. Yes, and let's see if he'll take a break from his chips to look at that silver tip Iris gave for him. This is a five shilling piece, isn't it? I believe it's called a crown. Yes, and you could train a Scotland Yard detective to do whatever you want with just a single one. Iris must be the most powerful ten-year-old in the world. How much is five shillings, by the way? What's it really worth? Hmm, well, it's probably enough to buy all the chips that the inspector could possibly eat in a whole month. That's greasy. enough people for a raid, honestly. I don't think that would be worth the, uh, the time doing that. Tell the gentleman in black whatever he wants to know. I trust that won't be a problem. Iris Wilson. Iris's little handwriting is adorable, isn't it? Tell the gentleman in black whatever he wants to know. I trust that won't be a problem. Yes, the handwriting might be adorable, but the message is ominous. There's no room for sentiment there. I'm sure it's simply the way you're interpreting it, Mr. Naruhoto. Anyway, I do hope the inspector will tell us what we need to know when he reads it. You don't think it will just make him munch piping hot chips until some steam comes out of his ears, do you? Well, that wouldn't be an entirely terrible outcome. I am exhausted. So, that'll be it for tonight. Um, I will not be streaming tomorrow, as I said. I'm going to be doing voice acting stuff and auditions. Friday, I'll be back with more of this. Saturday afternoon, probably mid to mid afternoon to late afternoon, early evening, I will be doing a webcam stream, um, which will and consist of card a short card opening stream, uh, some Legos. And maybe something else, if, if uh, I have time. But we'll see. I might not. Um, and then Sunday I'll be off. Another thing to note, again, uh, Friday through Sunday this weekend is the Vine Sauce Charity Stream. I'm streaming during it, but I highly recommend anyone that's interested in helping out uh, Pediatric Cancer Research Foundation to check out the Vine Sauce Stream. Vine Sauce is a great community. They're great streamers. Much more talented than I am. Uh, so I highly recommend checking out their stuff Friday and Saturday, uh, if, if you, you know, if you get bored with my stream, or if you're not here, or if just in general, I recommend it, especially if you have money to donate, uh, cause it helps, goes to a good cause. Check them out. Yeah, you love check. great! Well then watch them instead of me this weekend. <laughs> but yeah, I'll be here, um, if you wanna watch more streams, check out twitch.tv slash team slash wildabandon, plenty of people streaming there right now. Um, my auto host will take you to one. I want to go raid Masco Squeaks. Uh, I sh okay, I guess we could do that. So I'll go raid them. I don't know if they're part of the team, but whatever. Um, uh, yeah, sure. I mean, we don't. We only have two people, but why not? Uh, all right. Y'all have a great evening, and I will see you Friday. Good night. <laughs>